Three nights deep into our first ever women's T10 international series and things starting to take shape. Top two, bottom two. That's what matters because the top two straight into the final on Saturday night and the bottom two, they've got some work to do. We'll see them first up tonight. I'm Mr. Maximo. This is the fan code ECIW Gibraltar and it starts right now. Good evening to you wherever you're watching from around the world. Welcome to another huge night in European cricket. It is night four of six here in Gibraltar. Hard to believe we're already into the second half of our first ever Women's T10 International Series. It's been really exciting so far. Great to see the development of a few teams as well. And really, we've seen a lot of exciting cricket. So we are starting the night with match eight. This is a match between Sweden and the hosts Gibraltar. Let's see what happens at the toss when Tara and Peters met the two captains. Good day and welcome to the first game of the evening between Sweden and Gibraltar. Gibraltar will be calling. There's a head. There's a tail. Heads is the call. It is a head. Um, both are. So the news from the toss is that Gibraltar have won it. Lizzie Ferrari says that she wants to field first. Look, I can understand that Gibraltar, we know they've struggled a little bit with the bat, although they have shown some improvement there. But they're leading with their strength. I think one thing about their bowling, when they get it right, they look really dangerous. I suppose the issues are the extras. And we know last night was a bit of a difficult night conditions-wise. But I have liked the bowling of the captain, Lizzie Ferrari. She was among the wickets last night. I also think Valverde gets some good movement for them as well. And look, as far as the batting goes, I just like to see them when they're chasing being a bit more proactive. But it all depends on what they can keep Sweden to. And I think that Sweden, you know, they just missed out to Italy last night. I know that uh, they were a bit disappointed about that. That's why they're sitting third with a one and two record. But I think Kanchan Rana batted really well. I expect to see her very, very surely at the top of the order. I think Gudjan Shukla as well. She's a great leader, isn't she, for Sweden. No matter what she does, I think she leads by example. So look, a chance for Sweden to put some breathing space between them and the host. But let's talk about the conditions tonight here at The Rock and I can tell you right now it's pretty pleasant out here, a bit of a breeze as we're used to, uh, but nothing too crazy yet. It's about 16 degrees right now. That'll probably drop a couple of degrees when the sun goes down, but I can't wait for some magnificent cricket here at the wonderful Europa Point Stadium. Now we'll have a couple of guests in the commentary box tonight, but it'll be Joe Wegasani that will take you through the first moments of this one. Joe, the news from the toss in match eight, Gibraltar. Let's see what they can dish up tonight. They'll be bowling first after winning the toss. It's over to you. Let's get ready for the first ball. Yes, thank you very much, Vinny Sandu, Mr. Maximo out there in the middle as we get a nice wide glance at the beautiful Europa Sports Complex here in Gibraltar. My name is Joe Wegasani, and we are here for this fixture, Gibraltar versus Sweden, coming up in the first ECIW 2023. It's been an amazing tournament thus far. We've seen these four teams pitted against each other and certainly a lot of growth and development along the way. Wonderful experience for everybody involved. There's been a couple of little changes there in the uh, Swedish line. They've got a new wicketkeeper, who's going to be Elsha Tellander tonight as we cast our eye over the expected score as calculated by the Crickbot calculator. It's 47 for Gibraltar and 74 the inverse for Sweden. So we'll see how that all fares in comparison to reality. All the players are out there. And it is going to be... Kanchen Arana and Signa Lundell will be opening the batting for Sweden. Sweden having had a pretty good run of it of late in terms of being able to build a little bit of innings at the start. They've just found the, the middle orders the struggle. And for Gibraltar, well, Lizzie Ferrari, she'll have the new ball. And we've seen that she is a damaging prospect indeed. Just need to control their extras, Gibraltar. It's been a big problem, which I'm sure they'll be looking to rectify. Anyway, it looks like we're all set to go. The bowls are out there, the batters are out there, the umpires are out there. Let's play some cricket. The first one for Ferrari, a little bit short, but on a good line and moving away. Just 
Padded back, a direct hit has it. The question being asked of the umpire, so on the very first ball, there could be a run out, folks. And that was fantastic work. That's you near a blag, or blag, as her biggest fan, Vinnie Sandu, the blagger bragger, would say. She's picked that up, coming in from mid off, and direct hit at the stumps. And that looks like it is out, folks. Well, how about that? You can hear the applause around the stadium as the first wicket falls for Sweden. Well, unfortunately there for Rana, she got her first delivery, slapped it back to mid-off, and a sensational piece of work there in the field by Yanira Blag. And her just marginally short. As the next batter now for Sweden will be coming out. This is going to be Anya Veja. And, uh, well, that is certainly something for Gibraltar to stick their teeth into. We've seen vast improvement in this team over the course of the preceding few days. As exposed to cricket at probably a higher level than many of them would have seen before. But having a look at that, it seems that all the hard work that is going into it is certainly coming to pay dividends now. First wicket on the board without a run to Sweden's name. Right. Wonderfully exciting start. A very big hello to everybody out there, wherever you're watching around the world, whether on Fancode in India, or of course on our YouTube channel, European Cricket Network. Good to see some of the favourites and the usuals in there. Nice to see you there, Dave and Gary Wheeler. Fearless Leopards. Well, that sounds terrifying. Good to see you're in the chat and not out here roaming around me. Ayan Shaikh as well. And Animesh Tim Sina. Big hello to everybody. And, of course, Crickbot is in there. My favourite artificial intelligence. Crickbot, could you please write me a poem about cricket in Gibraltar? That's what I'm asking you. Here's Lizzie Ferrari. And just angling down the leg side on that occasion. You do see this with Lizzie a little bit. She's a very impassioned cricketer. And sometimes just puts a little bit too much into it. So just dragging it down there, you see that front arm just angling a little bit towards what is essentially looks like a leg slip. And so uh, in short fielder on the leg side behind the bat up. That's a much better ball coming from around the wicket this time and just played off the back foot onto the offside. They'll scramble. No. no run taken, so they look like they were ready for it. And a good evening to you as well, Michael Daub in the chat. Lovely to have you here with us. Here's Lizzie Ferrari right on the stumps and take it off it in a on drive. And that will be a run to the bat for Lundell. And one problem that Gibraltar did have last night was with their they're overweight, not quite getting there in time. They were punished the five runs for not making it to their 10th over within the allotted time limit. So they'll really want to hustle things through tonight. Now, just while we're waiting for this all go on, look, I may as well hit the, hit the button right now. Coming into the commentary box to join me, very, very special guest is we're going to have Louis the Bruce. Good evening, Louis. Evening, Jeb. There he is as we watch Ferrari come in. And that one, a really good ball just moving away as well, a bit fuller. Uh, Louis, wonderful of you to join us here uh, at the here. Europa Sports Complex. No worries at all. How are you feeling about all the cricketing action in front of us? Well, I think in, what's in front of you is awesome. Just the prospect of women's cricket coming to the game now. It's just fantastic all around the ECN. So hopefully this is the start of a big thing for ladies cricket. Very well said as Ferrari gets another one line and just... Waited upon by Vaja, she plays it late and it's going down towards the rope despite the desperate, desperate attempts down there. Unfortunately, it was really looking out there. Bexworth, who's feeling down fine on the fence and despite her best attempts, unable to get it. So four runs to the Swedes. Yeah, absolutely wonderful, isn't it, Louis? And uh, I mean, you would have had a, a good good look at what all the players out there are, are facing. You've been playing a lot of cricket on this pitch for the previous month. Is this next delivery, final one of the over? Very is well bowled. Yeah, very well bowled. And uh, tell us a little bit, what, what did you think of that first Ferrari over? Well, I mean, set 
the tone set in the field there, I think, what was it, first ball directed run out? And that's dismissing the opening batsman for Sweden. So I think just really awesome stuff there from Lizzie to get her line and length right against the left-hander and right-hander. And then some really well backed up in the field. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you would have had a little bit to do with a lot of these players as we have a look at the, the stats gun here for EuropeanCricket.com. Uh, top batters, I really like the look of Noel Legea. Can you tell us a little bit about some of the players for the Gibraltar team, Louis? Um, it's a relatively young team. I think there's a lot of members that have just been brought into cricket quite recently, but I think there's a few stalwarts of women's cricket that have played before. I think we had a tournament in 2014, so the likes of Amy Valverde, um, Noel and Lizzie have played in this team before, so are quite big leaders in this. Is Valverde coming into ball the second over, gets it right on the money to start with. Short pulled away and they run through for the single. Yeah, it's been uh, fantastic to, to be part of the Gibraltarian cricket scene. Uh, you've you've grown up. Tell us a bit about yourself. You were born in Gibraltar, Louis? Yep, born in Jib. And I've, I, I had a weird sort of development in Jib. So it's sort of all, my development happened, funnily enough, while we didn't have a ground. <laughs> Well, you've certainly got a ground now, sure. and on it, that has been played uh, late back with a point in the air for a little bit, but into a vacant region all the way to the rope. Four big runs. Well, she's waited really well there. She's just played off the back foot, which is hard to do on this pitch. Usually you want to get forward, but no, she's just played with the pace there, played late and hit it behind point four. Really nice shot. So tell us a little bit about that. You, you spent a lot of time out there over the last month, Louis. You managed to rack up. Uh, somewhere in the region of 500, 513 runs you made over 22 innings as Valverde comes in and going looking for the drive but moving it away, lovely, that's a really good line of length. Tell us what it is like to bat on this pitch. It's probably one of the trickier astroturfs you'll find around Europe. I think just you have to play the ball on, on merit on this pitch really. So that ball, for example, it's the right shot played. It's just got beaten by, by a good bit of swing bowling from Amy. So well bowled. Yeah, she gets a right on the money. He's scared. Yeah. So she's found that point there. Uh, we've really seen from up here that there is a variable bounce as well between depending on what line it is. Is that something that you found? Yeah, I think it's very dependent on the pace that people are bowling. So you'll see sort of slower, loopier bowlers get a lot more, well, get a lot less purchase, which is almost more dangerous on this pitch. Well, three good balls in a row. That one hit straight to point. It's fielded really nicely. There is a lot of energy out there tonight yeah i think they've been fantastic and in terms of the ground fielding i think this jib team's been fantastic so far through this tournament just seeing a bit of a few of the highlights yesterday i just saw some really good bits of ground fielding around yeah it certainly seems to be a lot of good work and uh there is so there is a bit of development you started when there was no ground there used to be a uh, gravel here i believe as valverde comes in a bit of a fuller ball that time but well directed looked like he was going <laughs> out it is a very important dot. Tell us what this ground was like before this amazing complex came into this, being. This ground, hmm, I didn't play on it actually, but from what I've heard and from what I've seen from a lot of the people that have played, it was a horror to dive on, obviously, because you're, you're playing on gravel, as you said. There's just rocks and chunks in the outfield that you could always split some, split some trousers and clothing on. And then just in, apart the batting-wise, it was... A very hard wicket, very tough wicket, almost like the old Malta wicket, very solid. So it was quite quick, and if you had a bit of pace behind you, then you got you got the ball through pretty quickly. There you go, very good insight. 12 for two, 12 for one, excuse me, is the score after two overs. It is Noel Lagea coming in. Am I pronouncing that right, Louis? Is it Lagea? Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Well, we have put the question out, and glad that we've hit on one correctly to start with. That one has been hit square of the wicket and a flying one-handed chance by Ferrari. Well, that would have been a screamer. But as it is, it sails past her head and over the rope for six big runs. That would have been Andy Reyes-esque catch <laughs> if she caught that on the boundary rope there. Is that, a, is that how, how they're being labelled now? That is, yeah. That's Andy, how we're all labelling them. Yeah, the one-handed in the mist. Yeah. Gee, you must be looking out at this and thinking, where was this beautiful weather, clear, clear nights? Yeah, I know it's cleared up for them. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice for us. That must have been quite the experience. <laughs> so Legaya, she's gone. So that was four, it was, taken off. Must have been a judge to have just bounced before the rope. And a good ball this good time and played defensively back on the offside. No, one run. Good bit of running there. Yeah. 
Yeah, um, we've seen in this tournament so far that uh, the running has been a really good element for, for some of the teams from the very get-go. How important is that in T10 cricket, do you find? The, the main thing in T10 is to not concede dot balls. I think that's the most criminal thing in T10. So as long as you're running hard and getting more value for your shots on the balls that aren't going to the boundary, it's, I think that's just perfect. Then you have the odd boundary here and there. And this one heading down to be a wide, but a little bit of back contact. And this, the misfield allows it to trickle over the rope, so that'll be another four runs. This is just one aspect, I think, we we're picking up on about the development of this team and how good it is for them to be playing against this sort of quality opposition. Another factor con to contend with is that you need to think about the left hand and right hand combinations, which has obviously been a bit tricky for our bowlers as of as of now. So just adjusting to different hands and sort of figuring out how to bowl to each of them is the biggest thing. Yeah, very, very good. Solid words of advice there from Louis the Bruce. He's here in the commentary box with me. Come and join us in the chat. Make sure you ask any questions that you have for Louis out there as that one is hit firmly behind square all the way to the rope. Another four. That is a great sweep shot. Yeah, really good. Just backed herself to get down on one knee there and just play it with the swing. Really nice. So the Swedes are coming as uh, they set about trying to Build a sort of total. What kind of total would you feel? So we, we noticed in your competition, the men's competition, of course, wrapped up uh, about a week ago. Uh, we weren't getting a lot of scores above 100. What do you feel is a good defendable total on this pitch? I think pitch-wise, when you look at the men's competition, we were looking at about 80, 85 as a pass score. I think that was a really defendable score on this ground. Funnily enough, we didn't defend it in the final, but we, we can skip past that. I think here, probably, <laughs> probably you're looking at, well... Eight, around the same really, 85-90. Well, there we go, another short one and played in much the same region, not going to have the same result as the Gibraltarian players converge on it, one run added. Yeah, a lot, a lot of these teams that I've seen so far in the, in the women's competition have really gone hard at the ball. So there's been scores of 100 plus more regularly than I think in our men's comp, which has been really awesome to see just the quality of these, of these players. Yeah, and there's been a lot of good offside play we've seen in this tournament so far. I think, uh, I'd love to get your insights on that with T10 uh, format batting. How much players do look to the leg side? And we'll come back to that as Legea continues. So that one in a good channel, a bit full, but that front foot didn't quite get there. After three overs, the score is 28 for one. And uh, yeah, let us know. So, so you started your first T10. Uh, we were here. It was at at Europa Sports Complex last year. Yep. What was your thinking coming into this format when you began? I found the format really tricky to start. So that, like, I think the first series that I had wasn't exactly um, the best in terms of my quality of cricket. I, I didn't really know how to play the format. So a lot of it was me really just getting caught up in this sort of stereo stereotypical mindset of must hit leg side, must try and clear the rope every ball which you don't really in T10. It's just blocking dot balls and playing positive cricket. So you can still strike it at a really good rate with playing proper cricket shots in T10. A good little lesson there. Is that one short, pulled away again, found the rope. You see there with the power play, they made the most of it in the last, and they seem to be continuing on their merry way. I think there's only two fielders outside the ring at the minute. I don't know whether this is something tactical or whether it's just a misplay but I think power plays over now I believe yeah, so and there's only two fielders out and according to the regulations for the women's game they're allowed now four players yeah. outside the ring yeah, they've moved out now so you think that might have been a little bit of a an oversight perhaps even not tactical this one a good ball from Valverde yeah. well bold see there that's where your foot has to go perfect so so to the left hand of that, you're saying that's exactly what she wants to be doing? Yeah, exactly that. It's just adjusting. You saw, we saw yesterday that they ran out of time to bowl their overs. That came massively a part of the fact that they were bowling too many extras because of the left hand, right hand, which is very hard to contend with if you haven't played a lot of cricket. Or bowled. Yeah, really well bowled. <laughs> she's improving night by night, isn't she, Valverde? Yeah, she's, she's one of the stalwarts that's been around for a very long time, so it's really good to see to see her sort of lead this group along with Lizzie and and some others and just help their development grow even more. Yeah, really wonderful, wonderful one-handed fielding stop last night. It certainly make its way to the highlights reel. 
Uh, there's a question in the chat from you, Louis. It's from Dave Barley. Is that one down leg side? Gets a little tickle on it, but there is that nice defensive, very fine, whitish, fine leg. Uh, the question from Dave Barley. Louis, who's better, you or your dad? Oh, Dave. <laughs> Dave. Dave, Dave. Funny man. Dave Barley, of course, a <laughs> member of the Rugby CC unit this year. And that one just losing her radar a little bit. So that is called a wide. Nothing, no, no connection to the bat. Uh, so let's let's use that to go back a little bit. Um, obviously, your dad's had a big influence on your cricketing development. What was it like growing up here? How did you get into cricket? What are some of your earliest cricketing memories in Gibraltar? I, I remember I played a lot of tennis and squash. I was a big solo sports fan. So I'll get back to it now. Wonderfully cut away, but there is protection there in the cover and a good Great diving stop. stop. Now, that was Christine McNally. Yeah. And so she was a big part of how I'm into cricket. So I was always a big solo sport fan, and then she sort of forced me into going to to cricket training session. There you go. So she was your PE teacher, your she physical was, education yeah. teacher at school. Yeah. And got you into cricket, and now you're up here commentating on a match that she's playing. <laughs> Small world. What a wonderful turn of events. So that one Shot. drivable and really hit really well and long, very long, <laughs> all the way. That's gone into the rugby sheds. Well, what a big six. That's a great shot. That, that goes for six on a men's boundary as well. Absolutely. That's a fantastic shot over mid-off. Just held the shape, hit with the swing. That's really good batting. Proper. And uh, before we get back that, to that, Dave did also ask a question. He wants to know, Louis... You were in Malta last weekend. How do you find yourself in Gibraltar this week? Was I? I, I don't know if I was. I, was. I think I was. I was losing a final in Gibraltar. That's what. That's what <laughs> I was doing last weekend. That's what I. That's what I remember. <laughs> unless you've got a double ganger. So that over comes to a close now. Forty runs on the board for Sweden, losing the one wicket along the way. And have a look, Signa Lundell and Vaja Anya Vaja there doing the work, building an innings. So, Dave, I hope that we got that one in. I, I suspect that you were seeing things over in Malta. A Louis Bruce doppelganger. And that one full and down the leg side and played really nicely, really fine, and beating the fielder all the way. Another boundary for the Swedes. Fielder at deep fine or deep backward square, you could call it. It was really close to cutting that off. So maybe this is maybe they've looked at how these teams are playing and have seen different areas that they're hitting, especially to... Being, not being able to adjust as well to the left-hander. Maybe they know that the ball will be more on the stumps. So trying to protect that area a lot more. Yeah, using the full available players behind the behind square on the leg side. Certainly they look to be protecting that. That fine leg is coming even finer. Yeah, so, uh, so Chris A. McNally got you into cricket at school and did you have a love for the game immediately or was it something that grew on you? Not immediately. I remember I struggled to hit a straight drive when I was when I started off and then I was like well I don't really like this and then st stuck at it really so full and dips down it is played away again square on the leg side by Lundell the left hander moves to 21 or 14 deliveries now uh, so it took time to grow and, and what are your, some of your earliest earliest cricket memories what was it like I want to know what games you were playing as as a kid growing up in Gibraltar at a time when the main cricket pitch was gravel my my best sort of training aid was a wall. I used to throw a tennis ball at a wall with a plastic bat for hours and hours on end. That was my form of entertainment when I, when I wanted to learn cricket. Lovely. That should, that should ring true for a lot of listeners out there. Certainly, the old, the old, we call them in Australia, Milo cricket bats, the plastic yellow ones. Yeah. That one is a good ball. It yeah, almost well dragged ball. onto the stumps. Yep. So that's great. And I... Uh, after so with T10, then you found last year you uh, got involved, and you, I, I seem to remember you struggling a little bit at the start, and then really seeming to find your feet. Is that is that a pattern with uh, with new cricketing formats for you? Or um, I just remember at the start it was a big struggle. I didn't really know how to play the format, and I saw all these people hitting the ball really big, so I wanted to sort of emulate that, and I thought I could, but. It's in reality, it's a very different game to what a lot of people see on the screen. Well, this is a good ball on the stumps, but it's going down leg. Could be a run out here. Could be. Just need that throw to come in a little bit more pace. 
But good pressure being put on Sweden in the field. That that is certainly something Gibraltar are yeah are doing very well. I think Sweden are playing the field well. I think they're just they have a lot of space on that leg side where they're playing here. They have three out on the leg side with no one in the ring. So I think any any ball on the stumps or on their legs, they're just looking to try and get away there, and they either get a boundary or they get at least one, which, as we said, dot balls and T10 are criminal. So here you're just maximising the amount of runs you can get all the time. And the game in to continue. Two deliveries left. That one taken off the stumps into that leg side region and a little bit of a misfield as well. Well, it's a trip, trip and roll. And that one makes it all the way to the boundary. Another four runs for Sweden. It's unfortunate that. Yeah, just missed it there. Unlucky. And then, unfortunately, the fielder behind couldn't back it up in time. And he had a, a little bit of a chance to captain as well in this series. You're captaining the entertainers at times. And what was that experience like? Captaincy in T10s is a, a really fun concept. I mean, <laughs> we'll come back to it now. More bold. Yeah, well done. Well no run there. Yeah. Well done by Sally Barton behind the stumps to get to there. Yeah, so that is the end of the fifth over, folks. 50 for one is the score. As uh, we just trip all over the place yeah. and make sure all the technical things are in position to have a look at you there at home. You can have a look at us. I'm here, Joe Wagasani, here with Louis the Bruce, we call him. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so you're talking about your captaincy experience uh, out here. Why is it fun to captain a, a T10 team? It's just the areas and everything you have to cover. There's all, you're always thinking every ball of different batsmen, different sort of bowling fields, and especially when sort of you have to think about where different people will bowl the ball to sort of please them as well as the batsman that's on strike. So you have big hitters, you have people that can go through the offside, people that go more leg side dominant. So it's just thinking about these sort of fields and everything so so that's a little insight into some of the things the captains out there will be thinking as we return to the live action and it is now going to be Bexworth coming into the attack in the first one on a really good line a little bit short though and Great shot. driven beautifully over extra cover that's gone one bounce over the rope four more runs that's a really good shot on this especially on this pitch because that wasn't a half volley she just waited there just yeah Played it off, almost off the back foot there, just yeah. over mid off. Yeah, it was. Wasn't it? Wasn't a bad delivery. First off from Bexworth. I think this pitch has started playing better since since the women have got on it. I think, we've, well, funnily enough, Richard Cunningham has rolled the pitch a bit. So. Yeah, he's a man of many talents, Richard Cunningham. <laughs> out there umpiring at the moment. Bexworth gets that one right on the stumps, and it's defended well away. And the pretty intensive throw in. Will not yield the run out as they make it home safely. Good not to give away any extras there. See, that's just really good T10 batting. Just good ball, and you've just respected it and got a one instead of just blocking it back for a dot ball. So really good. Just no dot balls is the biggest thing in T10 cricket. You can still play good cricket shots and strike it at 200. So that's really good from the Swedish batsman. Well, that's great advice. As uh, we'll return to Worth's over here. And again, a good ball right in that channel. I find that that channel uh, is, is wide outside the off stump in the latter stages of the innings is a very important one to bowl in well, T10 as well. Exactly, as, especially because everyone wants to look leg side in T10. I've done it. I've done it myself as well. You sh that ball should really be coming through this gap, yeah, just in front of of square on the off side here. You should get a boundary there, really. It's in that place again and again, dragged away to the leg side. Makes connection this time and finds the rope as well. Or we'll just do that. That works. Yeah, well <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Why, who needs a who needs a cover drive? Yeah, exactly. No, fair enough. No, no fielder at mid on, so just pick the gap there. Certainly has, and Lundell is carrying about on her merry way here. She's moved to 29 now. Signal Lundell. I mean, just look at the strike rates. You look at the boundary count. I don't know how many boundaries they've each hit, but it hasn't been that many, and they're still striking pretty highly. Yeah, it's a combination of good running and then getting getting the bad balls into a place where you can capitalise. Yeah, just that. Just as simple as just not allowing dot balls to creep into your innings, and then if you don't allow dot balls, you're at the minimum striking at 100. You get a bad ball here and there and put it away, you're going up even further. And so you're saying dot balls are really the, the big no-no in T10 cricket? Yeah. You must be able to feel that when you're out there. 100%. And in contrast as a bowler, when, when you bowl a dot ball, 
that's just a massive win. Well, it's not going to be a dot this time. That's taken off the legs. One bounce, two bounces, thrice over the rope. Four more runs. Vaja joins her partner in the 30s with that strike. Even there, that's not that's that's not reckless batting. That's just fa she just found a gap there on the leg side and she just put it away, sort of respectfully and sensibly. It hasn't. That's not really trying to whack it at the ground for six like you see a lot of people do on, well, in T10s in general, even even in T20s. So yeah, good sensible batting. 64 for one is the score. Six overs into this, the Swedish innings, the first of tonight's play. Of course, we'll have the Netherlands taking on Italy after this match. Yeah, it's uh, very, very sensible uh, words, Louis, to uh, you know, essentially dot balls in this format of the game can certainly make the difference. And uh, you looking forward to the ECL? I am. I've just seen Shrugs just put a comment there in the chat. Yeah, we are going over as the Lathbury Lightning. The Gibraltar representative team, we're in Group C, I believe. Group C? You might have to correct me, but I think we're in Group C with Belgium, Switzerland, Hungary and Norway. So Anson now coming in. This is Julia Anson. Have to bowl that ball again, just not quite landing it in the area. Yeah, it's a uh, and you played last year, of course. And, and tell us about the the whole event, the experience. It was, it was a. We'll get back to it now after this ball. We'll get back to it, and Julia Anson will get back to it as well, as that's called another wide. Unlucky, the free hit will continue there. Um, yeah, the ECL last year for us was was a really weird experience because obviously during the time of the main prime time of the Russian-Ukraine war, the Russian team couldn't make it at that time. There's a better ball this time from Anson and it beats the batter. Yeah, well bowled that. Very good channel there to the left-hander. So yeah, we, we sort of got pulled in very last minute and we managed to put a team together and be able to just get up there and play the five days of cricket I was, I think, at the time. Now it's three days per group, I think. Again, down the leg side and gets a little bit of bat onto it. There is protection there, fine. As Legea comes in and mops it all up. Yeah, it must have been a... Uh, so do, you, do you recall uh, the teams you were playing in last year? I remember I missed out on a day because I was, I was still in school during that time and I didn't have the time to, to take it off. But I remember I played Germany, Sweden and the Malta team. And then I think on the day that I missed out, the guys played VOC Rotterdam from the Netherlands and I want to say the Belgium team I think yeah some tough competition <laughs> tough it's, opponents. It is. it's a tough top it's a yeah. tough competition in general I mean I think the quality of European cricket all round is is growing exponentially at the minute so it's really good to see it certainly is as Anson this time just losing control as that comes out of the hand a little bit too late yeah it's been a remarkable thing so uh, you're 17 years old you've Finished school? Nope, still in school. One more year? Yeah. Are you finished this I year? Finished this year, yeah. And are you studying for, what do you do in Gibraltar? Do you do A-levels? Yeah, so at the minute I'm in the middle of my A-levels, just coming to the end of it now. Okay, that one down the leg side as well. So this might be a little bit of a problem for the overrate as these wides keep on accumulating. And uh, what are you, so with A-levels, you pick a certain topics that you focus on? Yeah, so we pick three subjects for A-level. So, we'll get back to it now, just after this ball. Very good. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I hope one of those subjects is cricket commentary, Louis. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is this is my first time doing commentary, so hopefully I'm not boring everyone to yeah. death over and over and watching everything. Absolutely loving it. Chris Hinkle in the Netherlands says hello as well, and uh, we'll just get to this delivery. That's in a good spot and tries to be hit. Hit all the way to Jupiter that's shining up there in the sky, but only gets a bit of the tail of the bat and no run out of it. That's a good dot ball. Yeah, good ball that from Julie Anson. Julie Anson is younger than me, actually. Is she? Yeah. Okay. So there we go. We've got, well, we've got, and Sally Barton behind the stumps is not younger than no, you. No, I don't believe so. So that's a great, look at that. Oh, almost bowls her well around kept. the legs as well. And very well kept. So you've got really the full spectrum of Gibraltarian women's cricket exactly. operating right now. Yeah, and it's just that mix of youth and experience and then the people that have been there before, like Amy and, and Noel and Lizzie, just to guide this team and the youngsters in it. Yeah, wonderful scope for growth. And Sally Barton, don't worry, is a catching chance. Gives up in the air down there at long on. 
a long off. As as run out and then a run out chance, but as it is, they managed to make it back for the two. That was a uh, that was a tough chance out there in the deep. Yeah, just just need to stick to the rope in T10s. I think a lot of fielders are really guilty of, of just walking in. I've done it a lot in. in well, you, you grow up being taught to do that, don't you? Well. Yeah, I mean, just in this sort of cricket, it's easier to dive forward than to try and have to run back and take it over your head and lose your balance. So I think just in this form of cricket, just stay, stick to the rope in the outfield is, is a massive thing. Well, wise words of advice from Louis the Bruce, who's here in the commentary box with me. And Julian Anson just endeavouring to get through this over. Has been too bad. The, the, sun, the sundries are really the place where she's been damaged in on the scorecard but when she gets it right it looks very hard yeah, to hit bold. good edge there catching chance so even even with the extras in this over you it still hasn't gone for that many yeah it's only gone for 11 so it's when she has got it on the right spot it's been really good and the swedish batsman haven't been able to actually get it away and, and as a when you're out there uh, captaining or you're bowling and what, what are you trying to set yourself as a uh, what is acceptable when you're bowling how many runs you want to give away Obviously none, but well. what, 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 <laughs> what would you be happy with as that one hit up in the air all nice the way down the back. ground? That is going once, twice, over the rope, four more runs. Yeah, nice shot. I don't, I don't know the thinking behind not having a mid on here. I think it's, it's a real strong point for a lot of batsmen, in, especially in T10. So I think maybe that might be a bit of a gap to plug, but something to look into a bit later. So seven overs gone, 79 for one is the score, and four days to go. Ladies and gentlemen, over there in Malaga, you'll be there, Louis. Not not in yep. four days, but in a few weeks. As we have the Champions League of European Cricket over at Cartama Oval. What is truly becoming, folks, and you heard it here first, the bastion of European cricket in Europe. We're now into, into yet another one of these wonderful series that is really, really galvanizing cricket around the continent. 31 clubs coming to play cricket down there at Cardamo as we return to the live action and I think you're right Louis the long on long off seems to be a, an obligatory fielding position yeah or fielding positions for this format in T T10 especially I think you really have to plug that area in T10s just because so many people look to hit there to Ian Latine in the chat hi Ian how are you and Iggy as well good to see you Iggy from Costa del Sol yeah Iggy's a big fan Says you're a natural on the comms, Louis. I agree. And Valverde. Oh, it's not Valverde, excuse me. It is Nicole Carana. And she's oh, got a wicket. Him. She's got a wicket. Well, what a wonderful catch there by Liz Ferrari. Tell us all about it, Louis. <laughs> well, the ball at first when I looked at it was really sort of sort of tossed up, gave it a lot of flight, and then had the field set for that ball. And Lizzie just Took the catch really safely there. Popped up once, but really safe catch in the end out of cow corner. Yeah, let's have a look at it again. So once more dragged from outside the off stump, which loses a bit of control, and then a juggling catch manages to take it on the second chance. Great catch from Lizzie out in the deep. Great work. Getting some big support in the chat as well. Andy Reyes is there. Well, it wasn't an Andy Reyes catch one-handed. Well, you're falling around the fence, but it was a Lizzie Ferrari catch. I think that's Mark Garrett's son Niall in the chat as well. So that's that's a good bit of a good bit of banter there from <laughs> Niall. Yeah, if you miss it, he's saying she should teach Mark Garrett. <laughs> there you go. No, that's a nice knock there from from Vida though. Thirty six from twenty two really really sets the tone there and hopefully the the other batsman the other Swedish batsman can come and can come and finish the job off now in the last overs. Yeah, so it's 81 for two now, 7.2 overs in. Question, was that Louis' former teacher took that catch? That was not. That was Lizzie Ferrari. Lizzie Ferrari. Who we'll be hearing from a little bit later tonight as well. She'll come and join. That's in a great the comms. shot. Beautiful shot through the covers and all the way to the rope. Another four. That's probably what what the, the batsman that just got out should have been looking to do last ball. I know the pace isn't quite there to generate, but she's just hit that in front of square, so she's generated her own pace through the ball there. Really good shot. 85 for two now. Last couple of overs coming up here. No, this is a good ball. A little bit short. She does say low and really well struck. Ooh, unlucky from Lizzie. Yeah. Great effort. Absolutely, mate. A fantastic effort there to 
Try and stop that boundary. What I really like that is the quick foot movement, getting yourself into place and judging that that ball was going to stay low and playing it low. Yeah, really good. Again, not no risk taken there. Just good placement there from the Swedish batsman from, from Shukla. So really good from the Swedish players so far in this innings. Yeah, I don't think Karana needs to worry too much about that one. Just a really good shot. Well, it's, she's going that way again. Lizzie Ferrari's roaming. She certainly... Has it turned the engine on tonight, the Ferrari? I think you see with this ground a lot, because it's all sort of astroturf, when you hit the ball up in the air and it lands in the pitch, it sort of plugs a little bit. So that one there didn't quite go, go to the boundary, whereas the ball before did, but they were hitting very similar areas. I think, I think Corey mentioned it in Malta, actually, and that it was the same thing, that it just plugs when you hit it in the air, but it races when you've hit it along the turf. Yeah, Corona coming around the week at this time. Hit back to her, and she does a little bit of hacky sack fielding. And there could be a run out chance if she throws to the keeper's end. But unfortunately, just misses that opportunity. Would have been a wide, so saved saved an extra ball there. Three minutes on the clock now, so they have to start yeah, pushing through. Speeding up a little bit more now. Yeah, no, these, that also seems to be a very uh, something that you really have to always keep in mind when you're batting in this format is judging the wides. Yeah. As that over comes to a close. It is 91 for two after eight. And we can have a look at how they've gone about building it there, the Swedes. And after a pretty good, pretty, uh, pretty modest beginning, those first two overs just going for six, they really have managed to hit the double digits every time, putting them in a good position to break the triple digit, digit mark. A new bowler coming in. And this is Bexworth coming to return to finish her spell. Three minutes, I believe, to bowl this over now. So yeah. I think they should be fine as long as not too many extras creep in. Right, there's a catching chance there if they can get under it. Unfortunately, that one was spinning and twisting and bouncing away from Sally Barton. Hard to catch on the lights as well. Yeah. One of the toughest experiences if you're not used to it. Well, so. Yeah, describe, describe that a little bit because you had not only the lights, but that drizzle, that sea spray coming in. Was that having an impact with the, with the catches? It in a certain way, the wind was more of the issue in, in that case. So if you're standing at cover, you'd have to judge it as the ball was going to come back. It's a wide ball. So yeah, if you were standing at a sort of square leg or cow, it was more you had to prepare for the ball to come really quickly at you. Whereas if you're at cover, for example, or point, you had to sort of judge for the ball to almost swell back towards the batsman. Right, there we go. You heard it here first, folks. Louis the Bruce, he's here in the commentary box. There's a catching chance there at extra cover. And it just goes down. So that's one thing, Gibraltar. I think each and every game, it seems that they find things to be able to hone on and, const and, and, and improve upon for the next match. And they do improve upon it. I really feel the catching in this yeah, stage. I think that's the biggest thing that we've... That the biggest focus for this jib team. I know that Kabi Mopuri and Samarth Bodum, Paddy Hatchman have all been working really hard with the girls over the last few weeks and and sam has been working them for a really long time yeah, it's a, uh, a bit it's of fielding one of the yeah, great fielding down there would have been a wide got some bad to it they run through for one anyway so yeah i think just the the victories in this the small victories every small victory you have to take as this team so far so the fact that they've never really played this standard of cricket before i think the, the, the fact that this is the first level they're really exposed to is fantastic it certainly is he's a good Line delivery and just pulled away. Not with any great force, though. They come looking for the second, but Rosie Riley is roaming, and she manages to get it back in in time to prevent any such thing. Yeah, good bit of quick fielding there in the deep. That's Those are those fine margins that just prevent wins and losses there, so that extra run could mean a lot. So some good comments in the chat, Louis. Well, Dave says you can't remember, well, your name. It's Louis the Bruce who's with me, but... So far, you've been the best guest commentator this year. And that's saying something, Louis, because we've had some great ones. Thank you, Dave. Very kind. I don't rate myself as a commentator, but thank <laughs> you very much. Right. Where does this Louis the Bruce come from, by the way? I just started calling you Louis <laughs> the Bruce. No, it's, I'll take just it. It has a bit of power to it, you know? It's, yeah. It, it's, you must be part of the old Bruce clan, of course, the old Scottish Bruce clan. Or uh, the kings of Scotland at some stage. Or often known as the Bruce So there we go. 
They should make it, so they just need to get through these next two deliveries. Race against time here. Yeah, it certainly is. I imagine Tyrone Peters, the match referee, is all cool and calm and relaxed as he <laughs> watches, <laughs> watches his timer. Uh, yeah, just two deliveries left now. So this one right on the money. It is pulled away. It's going to go a long way, in fact. Might be six, that. Yeah, it's been called a four, but that little... That little spit of turf looked like it came up on our side of the fence, Louis. Yeah, good sportsmanship there as well. A couple of the fielders and the coaching staff calling six from Gibraltar, so good to see. Yeah. We'll just see here. Ooh. Yeah, hits the rope on the full, I think. Yeah, there it is. So that is a Maximo. There we go. Yeah. it up now for the Swedes. That's a big. That's a big moment for Sweden to uh, get there. First 100 for this series. Yeah. I think the average score of this tournament so far has been around 90-ish or something like that. So the 100 mark's getting broken quite often. Yeah, it certainly is. We've seen some wonderful stroke play. I uh, just want to see. Uh, so it looks like that was the end of that over. It seemed that we had to get everything to recalculate and realign itself. So we are into the ninth. Or into the 10th, excuse me. And it is Liz Ferrari coming in to finish this off for Gibraltar. So that one taken off the pads. Doing great work running between the wicket as well. They scramble back quickly for the second. Really good running there. Just again, just at this time, just that hustle can, can mean so much when it comes later, later in the game. Yeah, it's the toughest time in the innings to really try to find another gear, but they certainly seem to have done so tonight. There's that one full of ball and played away again down... Too long on. There's your old PE teacher. Yeah, coming back for two again. Yeah, good running. Well backed up as well. Just positive, positive running is the biggest part here with this batting. If you're not finding the boundary, then you have to run hard. Maximizing your, your value for shots in T10 is the biggest thing here. Yeah, it certainly is. And not we, we talked a lot about it. Yes, Dave, Vinny and I, but not feeling the pressure of losing your wicket in so many other formats of cricket that you... And that's a very good delivery from Liz Ferrari, getting a dot ball, no run added. Yeah, I think that's a big thing in T10. I think the first time I played it, I was thinking more traditional of your wicket means a lot, but in T10 you have to really face the fact that it doesn't mean that much, so you can go out and just be really positive. More ball again, will it look for two again? Oh, and Lizzie tries the old football shin stop. Worked for the other night, not on this occasion. They run through for one. Uh, big question for you, when's your next international game, Louis? I don't know whether I can reveal that yet, but it should be soon. I think the ECL is the next form of international cricket that we should have coming up, or as close as you can get to international cricket. So that should be a really good experience. Wonderful. There you go. I love a bit of secrecy as well from Louis the Bruce. So it is coming. Iggy Iggins asking that question. Bit of sleuthing on the chat. There's a dance down the pitch by Gunjan Shukla. Yields no runs. Or was it called a wide, Louis? Yeah. It was called a wide. Oh, Steve McVeigh with the with the with the drive by on Harman Preet Kaur. Certainly struggled in that semi final today. Her back got stuck. She was yeah, trying I to take that. a run. Her back got stuck and so, so I saw a what does she make 52 or something off 39? A really yeah. good knock. Unbelievable player. Uh, that Indian team, and I think the Women's World Cup in general, just to expand on the start of this European concept, but the Women's World Cup that I've seen, the, some of the quality has been amazing. Absolutely. It's just coming in leaps and bounds. And uh, as, it, as it should, women's cricket's been around for a long, long time, and thankfully it is getting the focus it deserves now. So this one tries to take it off the leg side, and really good work from Shukla. Yeah. Running that through. Great backing up. And that will be that will be the end of that. So folks, Sweden, they have gone about building uh, with that final run of the day. I thought that might have been a wide, but I think it's been just called a bye by by the umpire. So yeah, I, I felt that she might have just got a little bit inside of it. So there you go. And Lundell, what a performance. So carrying her bat through from the top. Really uh, sensational work and hearing the warm applause there from her teammates as we go to some of the highlights. And it really was uh, from the beginning. Well, Lizzie Ferrari, she
she started the bowl. She opened the bowling. There was a couple of chances. That run out, certainly a great piece of work in the outfield, but some nice late play, particularly behind the wicket on the offside by the Swedes. They were really making it that part of the chart, their scoring zone. And some uh, excellent elevated shots as well, chipping over the infield. Yeah. Just the Swedish highlights here, just going to be full of really positive batting, really. Yeah, just you see there, that that was one of the risks that was taken. I think that might have been one of the two sixes hit during this innings, but other than that, it was just running hard, putting the bad ball away, and then just playing sensible cricket for a lot of the time. Yeah, absolutely was, as we see Lundell continuing to go about her merry way. And what I really loved about this is that she was hitting it all over the ground in all different directions, 360 degrees, and choosing her spots. She was well helped by Vajja, who also accumulated a good total for herself as they set about taking the Swedes to upwards of 100 runs for the first time in this series. It's really, really fantastic for their confidence as well. There was that great catch, Lizzie Ferrari taking it and uh, letting, sending the Vajra on her way. But then Shukla came out and she is not going to hang around without going whack, which she did a couple of times. So there we have it. We'll have a look at the batting scorecard now. And so we wait for things to come up. Have a look at your beautiful hometown there, Louis. Yeah. And, uh, what do you? Yeah. What else would you like to say about that innings? I just think I think there's a lot of positives again for the jib team to take. I know they've bowled quite a few extras, and you'll see that now. I think in the batting card. But I think just that every small victory, every dot ball, every good ball that was bowled, adjusting to the left hand and right hand combination throughout the innings was really good. As for the Swedish, how they went about it, I've already spoken enough about it. But they've just been very positive in the way that they've run and the way that they've played their shot. They haven't got bogged down, haven't had many dot balls. And yeah, it's showed in this batting scorecard. So there you have it, folks. 113 for two is the score that Sweden put on after their 10, led by Kanchen Rana. Well, she went for that zero. But then Signe Lundell putting on 44 with Anya Vajja making 36. So a great partnership there before Gunjan Shakla came out and hit a quick fire 18 off the seven deliveries. And that is certainly going to be a formidable total for Gibraltar to approach as we go to the bowling scorecard in just a moment. And uh, how should Gibraltar go about approaching this then, would you say, Louis? I think really that they should look at how the Swedes have gone about this. So their batting hasn't consisted of a lot of boundary hitting, but just really positive sort of running and good placement in a lot of scenarios. So I think just see how a lot of these teams go about their work in this tournament and on review you can really see that it's just about how the teams just rotate strike really well and go about their business. Fantastic, well there we have it. Louis, I want to thank you so much for joining me in the commentary box. I really feel like uh, as we've had a few of our guest commentators, uh, you being one of them, ha have a bright future in cricket commentary. If you're ever looking for it, absolute natural behind the microphone. So thank you very much and uh, we look forward to seeing you out there in the ACL in thank a few weeks' time. Thank you very much for having me and thank you to all the ECN as well for coming and putting this tournament on for the men's tournament and the women's tournament. I think just fantastic, the, st the stuff that you guys do across Europe all, all through the year. So thank you for having me and w yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And so we will be back to see how Gibraltar go about chasing this 114 runs. They need off 10 overs and in a few short minutes we'll be back with all that action and more. Until then, ciao for now.
And a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you're tuning in from around the world. My name is Joe Agassani, and here we are at the Europa Sports Complex in Gibraltar. As we've just seen the Swedes go about their innings, they put on 113. So that leaves Gibraltar going. They need to go at a little bit over 11 runs and over if they are to chase this down. But for sure, they would have set themselves some small targets to reach along the way. They've got past, they want to get past their highest score, which so far in this tournament is 52. And beyond that, getting through the 10 overs. Certainly going to be a challenge to hit that 114 runs, but they will need to find a little bit of innovation in their batting as we've seen throughout the tournament. The batters that are using their feet are certainly the ones that seem to be reaping the most rewards. As the batters coming out, Christine McNally joined by Noel Lagea, who will be on strike to face the first delivery. And it was great having Louis the Bruce in the uh, in the chat. As uh, gave us a little bit of insight into what it was like not only growing up in Gibraltar and playing cricket here, but playing in this amazing stadium. It was only a few years ago that it was a gravel pit. And it's been developed into this wonderful multi-sports facility. So all the players are out there. There's a little bit of frivolity around the ground, which is always good to hear. And the bowler is Harriet Shamto. Here we go. Let's play some cricket. So a slow ball with some air and lifted up and caught, almost caught at backward point and backward square leg, excuse me. As that first delivery taking the top edge. There is a run added. As the first runs for Gibraltar on the board. Not coming in the most convincing fashion. I like the work of Shamto. Very dangerous bowler. This one dragged down the left side and hit down the leg side. One bounce over the right. Four runs for Gibraltar. And Noel Lagea continuing her fine work from the previous innings. As she read that really well. It was going wide, but she did really well to get down low. Keep her eye on the ball and be in a fairly still position when she hit it as well. Kept her balance very, very well. So it was Christine McNally who hit that boundary. Of course, they had crossed with that first shot of the match. So a big hello to you wherever you are. If you're tuning in on the YouTube channel, European Cricket Network. And one wide will have to be bowled again. Then uh, come in and say hello. Hello to Steve. Hello to Dave. Hello to Kitty as well. Glad that you've made it home from work in time to catch your favourite sport on the planet. And then, of course, Fayed Mahmoud and Tanya Taba Sumo. Thinking Gibraltar is going to win this match. And I agree with you, Chris Skinkle, in the chat. Louis was a breath of fresh air on the comms. So that's a good ball from Chamto. A little bit short outside off but cutting it back into the right hander and a big swing and a miss through to the keeper no runs added you might be able to hear the dulcet tones of miss maximo in the background as he prepares to rejoin us in the commentary box and that one angling back in on the stumps again and mcnally did really well to get the bat down prevented getting past her another dot ball and these are the moments where for Gibraltar, they really, they've started so positively with that boundary, that early boundary six on the board halfway through this first over. This is where they don't want to get bogged down at all. So just like that, McNally dances down the pitch. She is not going to find the rope. The Signa Lundell is roaming down there, but she does get one more run off the bat. So a really good positive start here for Gibraltar. Using the feet, trying to get to the pitch of it. For those fuller balls down the leg side, they seem to be jumping on them with, with fair, a fair amount of ease. As Legaya now on strike to Shamto. Well, she goes for it across the line. It does hit her down low. And as we know, that is going to spell danger here. 
And the big finger of doom goes up. So Legea will have to head back to the sheds. As she, that one hit her on the full, as you saw. And going, a judge to be going on to hit the stumps. So unfortunate. Unfortunate to lose her wicket, but replaced now by Amy, Amy Valverde. And as we heard from Louis the Bruce, one of the stalwarts, well, two stalwarts of Gibraltarian women's cricket here, one replacing the other. And certainly it will be interesting to see how Valverde, I feel like she's really come out of her shell since the very first match. We heard from Louis, she's a very experienced cricketer, has played a lot around this area. And coming in to play the first international T10. It was, uh, maybe a little bit daunting at the start, but it seems to be playing with a lot more freedom now. It's seven for one after the first over. As Jeff Maguire in the chat adjudicates that for himself. Plum, he says it was. And I agree with you. As that one will fall down the offside. And that's an area where they can really take the cues from how the Swedes went about it by... Playing with a bit more of a, a look to play it through the covers. So this one also down the leg side. And it's getting a little bit excited there for those shorter balls to be hit through the mid-wicket. Talking about short balls. Here's a man who, when he's behind the stumps, can certainly gather them up fine. Here's Mr. Maximo joining me in the commentary box. Thanks very much, Joe. Good evening, everyone. Didn't know where I was going with that. Big thank you to <laughs> Louis, by the way. Doing a great job in the first innings. Here we go. In over number two. And, uh, yeah, look, uh, Gibraltar they had their moments, didn't they? I love the run out first ball of the night. Also, it was a good catch take. I mean, individually, there were some great highlights there. I suppose Sweden's still getting away with some really nice stroke play. Lindell batting through the ten overs. This is Shukla. I'm a big fan of her. And, well, why not? With bowling like this, she straightens one down the line and just blasts through McNally. So two wickets down now, seven for two. Yeah, it's certainly the area where we've seen so many batters struggle on this pitch. That ball just pitching right on the middle and off and staying low. And that big swipe across the line, playing all over it. So another wicket falls. McNally has to go. Now, it was lurking in the first innings. And I just spotted... Yanira Blag is in the chat. I know she's not in the, in the lineup tonight, but I mean, she probably knows I'm a blagger bragger. So, hello, Yanira. If you'd like to say hello to me in the chat, that'd make my night. Yeah. Uh, pity you're not out there in the team, but I know not everyone can play every game. But, uh, yeah, Gibraltar fighting hard. Let's see if they can. You know, first and foremost, I'd love to see them find a new personal best. 52 is their best. They almost got there last time. They got to 50 exactly. But. Yeah, they, they, I think they'll be a little bit more aggressive with the running tonight as well. This is Lizzie Ferrari who's coming to the crease in the number four position. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Trying to beat that, that highest score so far will certainly be one of their targets. They're doing well at the moment, although that is over from Shukla. Certainly putting the brakes on. What was a pretty good first over for Gibraltar. Yeah, so Ferrari's at probably... Mm, yeah, a technically good time with be, beef. Yeah, could be, beat, beat <laughs> that. Ferrari. Look, <laughs> I think... For me, she's probably their most technically correct batter. I think she's also got the good mix of power and technique, but occasionally he's gotten into trouble just trying to cross bat balls on the stumps, which is a little bit risky. So this one not on the stumps, very down leg. She does try to cross bat it. Nothing doing though. Hits her on the pad. No run added. And I think you're absolutely right, Vinny. It's to not try to hit everything down the leg side, but really doing what the Swedes did. Use those big vacant areas on, down the offside. Yeah, on running occasion. hard. Yeah, running hard. It's certainly a big key. Big hello to you, Kitty Hunley. She's saying hello, Vinny and Joe. Vinny is going all fanboy about you near a blag. She's I am. A blagger bragger. I'm a blagger bragger. She knows that. I mean, she watches the broadcast. She's a... Uh, I actually did think she was playing early. I think there's a Yanira Black lookalike out there. Well, it was ropes that took the run out. A few people thought that might have been Yanira. Anyway, it's the end of three overs. The score is eight for two after three. 22 matches without a golden ball. And yeah, it goes up pretty quickly, doesn't it? <laughs> no golden balls today, although we, we did see the final settings uh, for 
the end of the group stage in Malta because it'll be elimination day tomorrow. It's as scary as it sounds. Eight teams become four. <laughs> I'll be back. Terrifying. Should almost call it decimation day. Get ten, ten, ten teams in there. Yeah, that's exactly right. But it uh, should be a good one. That's two overs down, by the way, not three. It's eight for two. Yeah, still and one left in the power play. Anya Vaidya coming on to bowl. So I'd really love to see from Ferrari and Valverde. These are their two, like you said, most technical players. And some good straight shots through the offside. There's a big gap there when the chance comes. That one straightening up, although going down leg. Catches a bit of the pad. No run. Yeah, so it's Prolter just got to find a way to be a little bit more proactive with the bat. I think they'll try and do that. Ferrari's a big key to that. They don't want to lose her cheaply, otherwise this could go pear-shaped real quick. And that will be a wide as well. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I think that's what Jib have really struggled with so far is that they, even when they have those positive overs, just one or two overs of tight bowling can really get them bogged down. And we heard from Louis there how much pressure you can feel in when those dot balls do accumulate. Yeah, that's right. That's why I think it's, it's important you do take on a few more singles and take a few calculated risks. This one, a fuller ball outside off and hit away on the onside. No run added. Yeah, the dot ball pressure, it certainly gets to you in a, even a T20, but T10 is magnified. So anyway, I want to say hello to Shrug. Nice to have you with us. And Iggy in the chat. Hello, Iggy. And I did get my hello from Yanira. It was Wonderful. A, he's he's as red, red cheeks as I've ever seen him at the yeah. moment. Well, I mean, I wouldn't say red because it is a little bit cool here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, nice to see you. And, and then keep going with the cricket. I think you've got a lot of talent. I think there's a lot of talent out there. Some teams at different stages of their development, but I think overall, this has been such a big success. Our first ever women's T10 international cricket. Vaid has impressed me with her bowling as well. Bowling to Ferrari. Certainly has, and she gets a top ball. Big swing and a miss of that. We'll have another look at it. But I like this from Valverde, the, just the backing up. Look at the backing up. She's there. She's kind of stolen three metres, so she's more likely to get down there. I think that's something that we'll see. Gibraltar, assuming they can hit a few balls here. Mm. No. They'll actually be taking on a few more singles, just trying to get that score ticking. So this one for Vaja will be called a wide as it just swung late outside the terms of limitation. Yeah, and it's something we uh, really noticed last night, and that's a wonderful observation by Uvini because we did really note with the Gibraltar team there was some hesitancy in the backing up. Yeah. And obviously being a directive come down because she is certainly... Amy Valverde, have a look at her as, yeah. as this delivery happens. Certainly taking it to heart. Ferrari, she's been dotted up five times. They're scoring her with a fork. Going to run here, though. I see uh, Booster in the chat saying Austria is missing this tournament. Yeah, Austria actually uh, couldn't quite organise the team in time. Obviously, uh, there's a few logistical things. So some invitations went out. Uh, Austria is a team we'd love to have here. And we know we've know we actually shown Austria on the network before, the women's team. They had a bilateral series at T20 Internationals against Germany a couple of years ago, we showed. But yeah, expect Austria to be on the roster if we can organise some more ECIW cricket, which I think would be a very, very good thing. Certainly would be, as this one hit on the full outside off, but again, not breaking that infield. And this is the, this is the point where Gibraltar really need to think about how they're going to try to find those gaps. And even if you're not going to break the infield, at least get it to the side of the fielders that you can scramble through for the quick single. Yeah, that's right. Anyway. Yeah, that's better from Ferrari. She doesn't clonk her pad out there and spoil wide. And you know, again, take those ones, you'll get it again. Maybe you'll get something you can score off. I think the length's been pretty good from Vidya though. I think she pitches up. I think what we've seen is when the bowling drops short, it's fairly easy pickings, no matter who you are. So the smart bowlers have kept it pretty full and Vidya's no exception. Another full one on the stumps, asking the question as well. Looks out and is out. Umpire says, yes, I'm afraid, Elizabeth. Despite your best efforts, you have to go. Yeah, and again, you can see just getting a bit itchy with the dots, playing across one, tries to hit that yeah. to right of screen. And I think Vaidya, a polite inquiry. She's a very polite yes. young lady. But yeah, there was no doubt in my mind that was crashing into the stump. So that's, that hurts really as Ferrari. Doesn't pull out a park, unfortunately, tonight in match eight. She goes for a duck. And it's 13 for three. Yeah, once again, a, uh, not a bit of a disappointing moment for the Gibraltar captain. She's 
yet to really fire, although we know she's got it in her. Certainly has played the kind of shots that can stand up in this format, but just unable to really avoid those balls on the stumps and yeah. not playing across the line. Yeah, it's annoying. It's frustrating as well as a batter when, when things don't go your way. And so, unfortunately, the captain has to go. I was going to ask her to commentate with me in the second match, <laughs> but I'm having second thoughts now after <laughs> watching that bat go flying when she comes back to the dugout. Anyway, look, Lizzie, hang in there. Your day will come. Took a great catch tonight. I thought a screamer. An absolute wonderful juggling catch. So full of ball. This will be a no ball from Boja really going in. Rosie... Riley out there, the new batter, does very well to get under it. Wow, Vijay, a bit of the smiling assassin <laughs> about this. Wow, that's actually hit the stumps. Look at this. Unbelievable. <laughs> no, this has to be uh, no ball. Has to be. Has to be. Look. It yeah. has. <laughs> she, he calls no ball and then kind of maybe gets a bit confused because his stumps yeah, had, to, free had to be... Hi. Yeah, it was extremely well How done. How about that, though? <laughs> well, yeah, the old I know that's Tyrone Peters' biggest nightmare. <laughs> Free hit for Rosie. Well, they'll get runs. They'll get a boundary here, I think. It goes straight through four buys. So, well, batter under attack, keeper under attack. Uh, Jim, they get some runs there, and it's 18 for three after three. Yeah, just trying to cramp her up. And digging in a little bit shorter there that time, Vajra as well, not as what she'd been doing previously. So, yeah, 40 for three. Oh, no, excuse me. It will be 18, 18, for, 18 three. for three. Yeah, 18 for three at the end of three. So I want to say hello to Jeff. And uh, saying you're going to Cardam Roval. Yeah, well, you know, the day will come, Joe. Well, we'd like to have you at Cardam Roval up the road. I hate you're getting a bit of FOMO. But, yeah, we've got, we've got Corey back on deck for that one. Yeah, He's kind of fair enough. He's chewed my ear off enough to sneak in. Yeah, right. Put in the hard yards, I'd say, Corey Rockers. No, well, I'd love to go. Corey so. and hard yards isn't something you really <laughs> put was, hand in hand. trying to be nice. Let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> no, and so, yeah, the, the problem with me, it's at an extremely busy time of the year I as know. well. I'm going to have to book, it, book for next year in advance. Yeah, but I mean, I think it's great when we can get you. Obviously, you bring a like, really good perspective. I love this from Surya, from Surya Ravuri. She's very quick to get back and get ready to bowl again. Yeah, she doesn't want that extra five runs added as a penalty. Is that one? Taken away to mid-wicket, running quick through for the single. Could have been a run out, but the hit, he, the throw is astray. Yeah, look, I think that if you're a bowler with a short run-up, it makes sense. Just try and keep the batter, just keep, keep hurrying them up. Yeah. The over just goes by in a blink of an eye. It's actually tactically really smart as well. That one taken off the toes, down to square leg. It was nicely, nicely timed by yeah. Riley. Yeah, Rosie Riley gets off the mark with a very nice looking shot there. Amy Valverde, I've been impressed with her cricket this week. Yeah, well, we heard from Louis that she's one of the, the three who's really been carrying the carrying the weight of Gibraltarian women's cricket for a long time. Good that she's got some assistance out there now and tries to take this one off the legs. It beats the keeper. They're going to run through for at least the one. That's a weird one. I mean, we've seen some balls really shoot through off the slower bowl. I don't stays. know if this hits a bit of pad or nothing. Maybe yeah, a little bit, bit of, of back pad. Bit of pad. Probably a leg bite. But yeah, that's very difficult because it looks like you can pull that length, but it's so low. You almost have to kind of broom pull it. Exactly. It's caused so many wickets here over the previous month. Balls like that as well. Does well to connect this time. We'll only get the one if she makes it there in time. Direct hit would have had a... That's a good run. Yeah. You know what I like about this? It might have been out if they hit, but it had to be a perfect bit of fielding. Yep. It's not going to be a perfect bit of fielding every time. Well, last night they were not taking those runs. Yeah, you can see that. That was just a good understanding. Riley hits it and runs. Gets away with it. Once again, looking for the single. Riley, she's all about it now. But yeah, yeah that, we weren't seeing those yeah. last night at it's all. It's a team thing that they're doing. I mean, even mm. look at this ball, the way that Riley, she's there. She's ready to go. She's looking for it. But then looks at her partner, sees her partner's not running, goes back. It's just a lot improved, and that's such an important aspect of the game. Huge, huge Especially part if you're it. not hitting a lot of boundaries, right? Yeah, so 22 for three is the score after four overs. And that leaves Gibraltar needing the 92 off 37. We'll probably let that one settle for a little bit, but I think there is some really good signs here for Gibraltar trying to get upwards of that 52 high score mark that they had in their previous outing against Sweden. Rob Thompson says, please see, treat Corey gently, Vinny. I always do. He's one of you. <laughs> I He's always. One of us. Trust me, I'm gentle. Here's Kachin Rana. Well, it should be close to a no ball. It is, in fact. Umpire calls it from square leg. 
Yeah, it's looked a bit high. Barana got run out first ball. It's an amazing bit of fielding by Robeson. It got her direct hit. So Rana trying to get something out of her night here. Comes Three up with hits. the ball. Yep. Riley just being beaten by the swing there. She does come down. Bit of bit of cheeky wiki keeping going on there. There's the El Elsa Telan, the new wiki keeper for yep. Sweden tonight. Nicely new player as well. Yep. For sure. Yeah, Elsa gets an opportunity behind the stumps. Yeah, so Sweden, uh, just the two points ahead of Gibraltar at the moment. They can maybe put a bit of distance between them and the Jibs if they can win this. But I think Sweden a bit disappointed. They couldn't quite make more of their clash with Italy last night. Gee, that was a good match, wasn't it? Yeah. It was tight for the most part of it. There's Rana now into the attack. And yeah, this one doesn't get past the bowler. But Rana, I yeah, like the way she goes about her business, though. Certainly really liked her batting. Pity we didn't see more of her tonight. Well, and Rosie coming down. I like the intent, using the feet, but just not quite getting the pitch. And we've seen the Swedish bowlers do this time and again. They really are getting good movement away from the right-handers. Yeah. Good late movement as well. Well, this is going to bowl her. It does. As Rosie thinks that one's going down the leg, but that late movement has her in as it knocks over middle. The bales go flying, and Rosie Riley has to take that long, arduous slog back to the shed. Yeah, well, it's just such a good swerver. It looks like it's going to miss the stumps. Rosie gets inside it, thinking that's not going to hit the stumps, is it? But that movement, talking about the late swing as well, comes back, and, well, Rosie, her <laughs> eyes smiles. She said, why did I do that? Yeah. Well, we've seen that a few times this year. I mean, she's not the first, and I don't think she'll be the last either. But she's the fourth wicket to go, and it's 23 for four. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another good lesson for the Gibraltar batters. And what that really indicates, this movement that the Swedish bowlers are getting, is the good, good uh, firm wrist action as they're letting the ball go, getting that late swing away from the right-hander. So, yeah, the thing about the Gibraltar lineup, I think they have a, a lot of batters that are you know, probably around about the same level. So, I'm not too worried about the fact that they've lost four here. Anyway, Rana. I think she can reproduce that one. Again, good swing. This is Robeson, who started the night on a high tonight. With that direct hit run out to get Rana. So, Rana's looking for some revenge. Now she's going to run here. Yeah, so this one, they, uh, another wide. And it's been it's been an element of the Swedish bowling that they've done pretty well tonight is to really keep those sundries in check a little bit more. And that'll be the next step of development for Gibraltar in their following outings is that one. Also called a wide. We'll just say that. A couple of wides in a row. Well, typically the line's gone to the, the bowler. I think Sindel's got the memo. He's <laughs> just arrived. But the Jibs will take the run, that's for sure. Right on the stumps, and that has got to be out. Hits her full right in front, not offering a shot. So Robeson, unfortunately, despite her great work in the field, out there with the bat, she is gone for a duck. Yeah, and look, it's just really good swing bowling. Well, at least Rosie will have someone to talk to because <laughs> that's exactly the same thing. At least Rosie didn't wear it, unfortunately, for, for Neve. She does cop that one, and that was definitely swinging down into the stumps. But you got to hand it to the bowler there, Rana. Super Genuine ball. swing bowling yeah. and just causing a bit of chaos with the batters. It's 25 for five after five. Tomorrow, elimination day wow. in <laughs> Malta. And so, yeah, we have the final standings. So this is how it works. If you are in positions five, six, seven, eight, you've got to work hard because you've got to win two matches on Elimination Day to get through to the semi-finals. The third and the fourth team, which is uh, a Southern Crusaders and Gozo's Army, they just need to win one match in the afternoon session to get through to the semi-finals. And waiting there are Sweet United and Royal Strikers. We finished first and second. So every game, one team's journey ends in Malta tomorrow. So join them. Uh, 8 a.m. GMT, 9 o'clock in Central Europe and 1.30 p.m. in India. Rico Full doing a great job today. He'll be standing by. Yeah, it's been a wonderful series out there in Gibraltar, of course. And uh, Swiecki United certainly looking the danger party there as 
We enter the six over, and Valverde not hitting this one with quite the aggression. I felt that she was she was there for the shot, there for the timing, but just pulled out of the shot a little bit. Yeah. I hope they still have the, the kind of aggressive intent here at Gibraltar. Valverde can hit the ball. Kayani in again now, and this time taken off the stumps, but only as far as the mid-wicket. No run out what, They went straight to Gunjan Chukla, the captain. She's such a good she's fielder. A, she's a ball magnet as well. Yeah, and that's her zone. Yeah. Mid-wicket, slightly shorter than usual at the moment. There's a big gap behind her, though, if Alberti can get hold of one. Yeah, just got to beat that infield. We'll find the rope. It's a fuller ball this time, outside off, and Valverde went to play it off the back foot. Could have stepped over a little bit more to it. Kayani. Into the attack now, Niha Kayani. I see her at the crease. A little bit of a sideways glance down by here. Saying, Please don't go to one. <laughs> Just kind of tiptoed past him. There was no call. Rana probably saying, hey, what's going on? <laughs> I got, got, got done for that one. It's pretty close to that. Oh, yeah. Giving them the line, of course. Is that one right on the stumps. It's gone right through her. Boulder, great bowling from Kayani. Well, she's another exciting prospect for the Swedes as she gets one past the bat of Valverde. And yeah. there's another wicket fallen. Just really good bowling. I mean, it's perfect length. Just drew the batter forward, beat the outside edge and crashed in the middle stump. So you've got to hand it to the Swedes. They are really kind of suffocating Gibraltar at the moment. A lot of balls straightening down the line. A lot of balls stump to stump. And right now, in the middle order not really having the answers. 25 for six now in the sixth. Yeah, there are anything they've bowled short has been fairly well directed, so difficult to get away. And like you said, they've got that fantastic fielder in the mid-wicket region who is stopping a lot of runs. That's been a tactic we've seen Sweden use a lot, and that means that balls like that on the stumps, players, batters trying to drive it and just playing all around it. Yeah, so I think the the running has been better from Gibraltar, but I yep. think the issue is it's not hitting as many balls because the bowling's been very high quality tonight from Sweden. I think I thought their backing up tonight was excellent yep. in the field. A lot of good intent. And I think their running has been really good between the wickets. So that one drivable. It might have been Boulder as well. It did. She's on a hat trick. Kayani. Well, we've already had one in this series. Could we have another? Vinny Sando. It's all unfolding in the sixth. What a piece of bowling again. I mean, this one, if anything, comes back the other way. And Bex Worth comes out and leaves just as quickly. Just have a look at where this pitch is. And how it hits wow. the seam, just comes in. It clips the top of off. So, again, that's all the length and a little bit of natural variation. And really, that was a good seed. I think Worth can really be blamed. She played the ball she saw, but it did come back in and hit the stumps. Well, we've already had one hat trick this week, Regina Sudazai, on Monday Night Cricket right now. Could we have the second big moment coming up for Niha Kayani. Of course, him at Tariq on the weekend took two in an innings. She's just, <laughs> I don't even know how you do that, but never seen it before. And it's going to be Sally Barton to kind of try and ruin the party for Kayani with one ball left in this over. It's 25 for seven. Yeah, Kayani looks almost embarrassed with that wicket as, as it went down. It's a wonderful piece of bowling and she's done it twice in a row now. Can she do it? Now, Sally Barton, I read up a bit about her. Yeah. I hope she bats for a while because she is quite incredible. She is uh, quite the mathematician. She's a teacher. She's a preacher. She's the polyglot. so many things. Yeah, she's yeah. a polyglot as well. Wicket keeper. Speaks, what did you say? She speaks Swahili. Yeah, I think so. A yeah. couple, couple other languages. Have to get her right now, she wants to be a hat trick party pooper. Here we go. Last ball, the sixth. Well, she's going to add that to the CV as she manages to avoid getting one. That was a good delivery from Kayani. Certainly gave herself the best chance for just drifting wide. And as such, Barton survives the hat trick. I really like Kayani because she's tall. She gets good bounce and she pitches it up. It's got to be awkward to face. Well, have another go. That's the first run she's conceded, Kayani. That was a wide. And this one outside off, but again with that air, giving the catching chance. But Barton finds a bit of space and sets off for a single. Great and stuff. Great really, shot by Sally. Really great description by Will Jennings. That type of bowling, he says, is my nightmare. So <laughs> slow, so loopy, and it draws you in like a moth to the flame. If you can be accurate with, it, accurate with that kind of bowling, it's real, real tough. Anyway, well done to Sally. She gets off the mark, and it's 27 for 7 after 6. Hope you're enjoying the action wherever you're watching from around the world on Fan Code in the Indian subcontinent and on our YouTube channel, ECN, European Cricket Network. Say hello in the chat. Nico Fernando's in there as well. Hello, Nico. Hopefully you're well. Just came after the practice in the gym. Well, Nico, get that summer body ready. We're looking forward to seeing you on ECN at some point this year. 
doozy of a game coming up next. Italy versus the Netherlands. Uh, teams in the top two positions right now. Netherlands, bit of kind of illness news. Heather Seeger's still not back in the lineup, but Babette Delater comes back. Steda Callis comes back as well. Anyway, let's get ready for over number seven. Same Shaker having a ball. So this one just dragging down the leg side and helped along its way by Barton, but no run taken. And some quick work there behind the keeper. It prevents any such thing. Quick work by Elsa to jump on that. Summer Shaker as well. She's pretty consistent. I think bowling's been a lot more accurate tonight. Even Gibraltar, I think, a lot more improved as far as the amount of extras conceded. Yeah, and thinking about the angles a little bit more, I noticed today, Vinny, that one short and pulled away. Is it? There's going to be no run, though. See, this one hits the seam and darts in as well, but when it's shorter, the batters have more time to adjust to that yeah. movement. I think you saw... See there. It actually, didn't stay as low. Yeah. It, you get a better look at it when it's a little bit shorter. And Kayane was bowling fuller. And it's hard for the batter to react. Summer Shaker in again. And right on the stumps. And well played by Barton. Takes it off the pads. It would have been LBW. High chance had she missed. But doesn't. No run though. Yeah, but Sweden. Like I said, they were disappointed. They couldn't chase down the target last night against Italy. But then back to business here. Still have hopes, I think, of, of busting into that second place. Absolutely, they will. As Summer Shaker comes back in, trying to find that next wicket. Much the same result as the ball previous. Yeah, Summer Shaker probably getting away with a couple here. That, that the batters wish they could have made better contact. Perhaps got a boundary. Those kind of balls short and angling in towards the legs. Yeah, it's just hitting through with a little bit more. A little bit more aggression, hitting through the shot. Sally Barton timing it fairly well. This one again, take, takes it off the pads. I really like the, the means of doing that. She comes through the bat really quickly. They do manage to scramble the run. So that ball would have had a lot of other batters LBW. Sally Barton yeah. does seem to have that ability to clear her front a front leg. She's got a good eye, is yeah, what it is. Exactly. But I like it, you know, a little bit of hesitation, but she was right the first time. And, and good backing up. Once good again. backing up gets you home. I think the only the shame here is they just haven't put enough balls in play, Gibraltar. Yeah. Uh, they, but when they have, they, the score's been ticking. And yeah, I suppose they haven't really had a couple of their boundary hitters firing with just one four in the innings so far. Yeah, it's just a couple of couple of elements still to uh, to come into their game, but certainly coming along in leaps and bounds. Summer Shaker in to finish her over. This one, a drivable ball, but just back of the length as well. So tempting that, almost getting the nick. It's well bowled, though. I mean, that's probably the line she should have bowled all along, but she gets away with it pretty much. Only goes for one in the over. Seven overs down. It is 28 for seven. Nico has a question in the chat. What time are Italy playing? Well, good news. I'll tell you right now. And actually, here's the teams for match nine. The news from the toss. Netherlands winning the toss and electing to bat first. So it is starting 9.30 local. So in about 35 minutes, we'll have... The first ball of that Bebe Delater. She's back and she's captaining the side. Callis is back from her bed as well. And she'll be opening as well, it looks like. Uh, and so, yeah, join us. 8.30 GMT. It's 9.30 Central Europe. 2 a.m. in India. So put some coffee on. Stay with us. As it'll be Thursday night cricket. Italy, though. So I hope I wasn't distracting you there, Vinny. But I know got, what happened. We've got Julia Anson and Paddy Hatchman giving her throwdowns in front of us. I She's heard a sound that sounded like ball, hit, ball hitting grandstand <laughs> in front of us. It definitely was. Is that what it was? I was a little bit scared for a moment. Keep whacking them, Julia. Yep. Don't worry about we're us. We're here. We're here. Ready for the catch. Paddy, uh, Paddy Ashman, he, uh, he's a big man and he throws himself around on the yeah, crew does. pitch. I have never look, seen him look so terrified. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> All right. Anyway, here we go. Kayani gets the second over. Oh, and it's knocked on. Yeah, she's played it onto the stumps. Well, Barton, she's gone for that shot. Gone to the well one too many times, trying to pull it to the leg side. And on that occasion, taking the toe end of the bat onto the woodwork. Kayani on a heater here. Yes. She's hit the stumps three times. That one was assisted by Sally Barton. She's got three for two. And really oh. Gibraltar finding it hard going here in match number eight. They're 28 for eight. Sally will play some nice shots while she was out there, but she goes for a couple. And I believe that will yeah. bring Julia Anson to the crease. Well, we know she's in good form because she <laughs> almost hit us in practice <laughs> just then. Let's see what she can do here in the eighth over. Yeah, and some warm reports for Sally Barton as well, who managed to take... Well, I'm really impressed with her, what you what you uh, described as her hand-eye coordination. Yeah. Able to take it off the pads. 
Just needed to find the gaps a little bit more in that infield, which is somewhere of a point where Gibraltar have struggled a little bit. I'm, just, I'm pretty impressed with, with Kayani, with yeah, her spell amazing. here. Just you know, drawing the batters forward, but they're never quite able to get there. Yeah, the flame, we'll call her. And just like that, of course, <laughs> give her a wrap. <laughs> give her a bowls balls. wide. It's really been the only issue. She has lost a couple down the leg side, but now yeah, I like it. And she allows the ball to do something, either swing in the air or you saw that one that cut back and hit the off stump. Yeah, it certainly has a bit of variation there. Goes for the off cut of that occasion, but it is dragged away. They're looking for the single. Well, two batters are at one end, and the throws coming into the keeper should be a run out. Is as tragically there for Prabha Raghunath for Gibraltar. Yeah. She found herself looking at her partner's eyes, standing at the same end of the I pitch. actually think Prabha, she could have trusted the call first yeah. time. I think, see, she turns yeah. her back on her at, the, at the worst time. Yeah. And that's why she doesn't get the memo. Because it was fumbled, actually. So she had more time. But just have a look. We'll slow it down about here. She starts to turn and go back, and she kind of waves her back. And I think kind of the agreement was, well, whoever hits it, they get yeah. to decide. Yeah. And then yeah, it's a bit of a mess, unfortunately. Good, good lesson, though. And that's exactly what we were talking about last night, Vinny. Just keeping that eye contact. And like you said, trusting the batter who's got eyes on the ball. Hesitation kills as Raghunath does pay the price. She's run out. And she's the ninth. We'll get to vault 29 for 9. So Chris Smith has calculated 14 sixes in 18 balls will win it for Jib. All right. There we go. Thanks, Chris. I'm in. Subscribe. Hopefully everyone's well out there in YouTube land and those of you watching on Fan Code. All right. Here we go with Karwana coming in at number 11. See how long she can stick around. The only wicket taker in the Gibraltar innings. Plays and misses outside off. A dot ball. Drop ball again. This is the kind of ball I'm talking about. Oh, that foot was up. This was really quick work it as well actually. by Elsa Telhanda. Uh -oh. Really quick work. I think this is out, Vinny. Oh, I think she's just Ooh. home. I reckon she's got a toe now. home there. I guess now. Oh, gosh, that is close. That's way closer than I thought the first time. Yeah, super sharp work behind the stumps. A Carolina. Yeah, she's saying, hey, what are you doing to me? Give me a break. So she survives. <laughs> 29 for 9 is the score. I loved her reaction there. <laughs> she was offended. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Now she get a free hit. Yeah. All right, come on. So Kayani, everyone think Max. Everyone think Maximo. I think Gibraltar number eleven hits Maximo. That'll be the headline <laughs> on the Gibraltar news tomorrow. Right, Kayani misses the target for the first time in a while. Here we go, free hit. This one oh. dragging along. That's oh, a no such. ball as Should well. Be a no I think. ball. He's called as such. Yeah, bounces twice. Yeah. Hey Kayani, so trying to take the pace off it and just. Overcorrecting a little bit on that occasion. Kayani. Yeah. Can she, hope she knows she can really just go nuts on this. She can't be out except for run out. Yeah, just, just Come on, Nicola. Get Here to the we pitch go. And hit it. This one. Bang. Oh, well, it was a good good ball. Fuller. Would have been a possible wicket taking delivery were it not a free hit, but as it is, just the dot. Come on. She's getting a run here. Come on, Nicola. Oh. Here we go. Yeah, Need something Gundy from Kayani down the side here that she can turn on, maybe. Kayani's been really, really accurate for the most part. A couple of exceptions this over, I guess. Well, this has fallen on the stops and just plays it with the straight back down the ground. Well, nine down now. I mean, you don't really need to, <laughs> to take too many risks. <laughs> you can kind of smile for the camera for two and a half overs if you can stick around. Kayani, though, really impressed with her bowling tonight. Three. For five, she's got one more ball to bowl. I'd like to see her step outside off as this mm. is, comes in. Oh, it's a full ball again. And down the leg side. She goes that was the, the one. Shot. Yeah, it was she there. Could put a swing on that one. Anyway, it'll be the end of the eighth over, 31 for nine. And let us know how everyone else has been. Did you follow the cricket in Malta today? I was, I was watching a little bit of it. And it was a bit of a battle for second place between the Crusaders and the Royal Strikers. So yeah, the Royal Strikers won the last match. Match 100, if you don't mind. And uh, that's why they go straight through to finals day Saturday. The What's happened to Gozo's Army in that? Gozo's yeah, well, Army, well, I know that they yeah, are... Tracking on second. They've told me that Kelly Damati will, uh, will be featuring for them 
in the final series from Belgium. So, yeah, let's see how they go. They're a bit hot and cold, very Lala focused. Okay, so it's nice to see that uh, Butter and is getting a bowl here in the ninth. Probably a good time for her to come in to the attack. Just loses the first one. But yeah, I mean, I've noticed this. I mean, first balls are a bit of a bit of an issue with a lot of the bowlers. They're certainly getting a bit tight, I think. But let's see if she can get it online this time. Well, it certainly is a little bit more yeah, online, but this better. time overcorrecting down the leg side. Another wide. Better length, though. Yep, much better length. So Anson, who yeah, almost ended I night early by hitting us in the warm-up. Let's see if she can do something similar to the bowling. Well, one of those straight drives is what we saw. Well, she gets, makes contact, finds a bit of a gap as well at mid-wicket. They should try to cut back for the second here. Have to turn around. Run. Yeah, well, they get one. And, well... Anson's got a run, so she might shot. be saying to Nicola, okay, why don't you get a run? Yep, very nice, sharing it around between them. I like that because she waited a little bit on it and found that gap. The Swedes really have employed it. It's Lundell at the moment who does it often, that mid-wicket fielder. Saves a lot of runs for them. This one chipped back. Nice shot. Uh, Steve saying, yeah, a bit of running between yeah. the wickets. Chat in front of square, the striker calls. If it's square or behind on striker. That's yeah. true for the That's most part. That's pretty much how I was taught as well. That's true. I think probably sometimes there's a couple of exceptions. when the, I always think if the striker can see the ball clearly, then it's probably good for them to take charge. So, for example, say you cut the ball just behind point. As a striker, you've got a good idea of... Yep. If that's straight at the fielder or not, you've probably got a slightly better perspective. But for balls that, for example, you miss it and the keeper might fumble it, well, then I think you need to look straight at the non-striker and let yeah. them decide. Trust. That's right. Communication and trust, like all good relationships, is that one that played at square of the wicket. She's been good here, Karana. Yeah, come on, Nikki, is the call. She survived eight balls. Yeah, she's certainly getting, getting the feet moving to it as well. Where is she going to get a run from, though? I'd like to see those ones behind her legs for it to really just swing the bat on them. You've got nothing to lose with those. And maybe you can... Down the leg side, find yeah. that gap between square leg and backward square leg. This one goes a bit wrong. That will be a no ball. That's the other thing. If you know the ball's bounced twice, you can actually just... Just whack tr it. Try yeah. and whack it. Because yeah. it, it's a bit like a free hit. Yeah. That's not even a free hit yeah. because yeah. it'll be a no ball. See, Butterin just losing it a little bit short that time. He's released it a little bit earlier. Oh, certainly really so earlier. Early enough. Gets it right through. Fuller ball. And look, and it's a free hit. Yeah, everyone's so coming she's, in. To she's the only one who knows it. And she's saying, why couldn't I do that on any yeah. of the balls that weren't a free hit? So, well, I think everyone, they were halfway to the bar then. But <laughs> bad news is that's for a, everyone. That's a really difficult ball to play. And it's a, yeah, really well bowled. Yeah. If she can produce that one again, could be interesting. Yeah. Can I not? Really getting some face time, isn't she, Nikki? Love to see her out there as well. And obviously, yeah, the only wicket taker for the Gibraltar team. Yeah, developing talent. And uh, Hill, maybe he wanted a bowl. Anyway, okay, <laughs> back to Catherine. This one's shorter this time, but plays it with a straight bat. That was probably the chance to get down on the knee and go whack through the mid-wicket as it is. The ninth over comes to a close. 35 for nine is the score. Now, I'm not trying to jinx anyone, right? I'm not trying to jinx anyone, but going to the record books, longest duck, I'm pretty sure was in Portugal a couple of years ago. <laughs> Wait for this. Okay. Uh, hold, please. No, you, you got it. Longest I'll, I'll... duck, 13 balls, zero off 13 by Paul Stubbsy Stubbs in Portugal. Anyway, well, Karana's not going to make that as she gets a bold on that occasion. That is, no, that was Anson. So they did, of course, change ends after the ninth over came to a close. So Karana's still on for the longest duck. Anson, as it is, will have to go for two, was it? I think she made two, one, one, but yeah, one's better than none. And, yeah, it's nice to see her get a run there. Look, Sweden, congratulations, though. I mean, they deserve the victory. They batted well, 113 off their 10 overs. And look, I think, you know, you look at the Gibraltar batting performance, the, what was obvious to me is that some areas were improved, but the thing was they just weren't able to hit as many balls as well, were they? Because uh, I think the length was about right. It was an awkward length. They wanted to come forward but couldn't quite get a swing on the ball a lot of the time. Anyway, the Swedes, they're happy. They move clear. This is what's coming up next. Netherlands, Italy, and it's only 20 minutes away. Don't go anywhere. More cricket to come. Netherlands batting first after winning the toss. Let's roll the highlights. And the Swedes, but we know that they're a reasonably, a reasonably decent looking bowling and fielding lineup. That was a rare error, and that was the only boundary of the innings 
in the end. But you can see they had a lot of balls hitting the stumps. That's why they got a lot of balls and LBs. And once again, Shukla, the captain, led from the front, bending them down the line. She wasn't the only one. And Gibraltar just finding it tough going here in the second half of match eight. Yeah, it was Shukla, it was Vajo, it was Rana. All came to play. Nia Kayani being the pick of them, of course. She would be end up with three wickets to her name. Also, almost got a hat trick as well as she kept putting them in a really good spot. Yeah, for and me. Yeah, Kayani was just a, a standout for me actually. Yeah. I, th I think that she, uh, yeah, second over went a little bit off the rails, but I think for the most part she was asking the right question. Sally batted well for a couple, but then chopped one on, and then there was a miscommunication that led to the run out of Prabha Raghunath. And like in the end, Surya Ravuri, I think she's done some good things, but congratulations to Sweden. And like I said, they were disappointed that they couldn't quite go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Italy last night. But they do pull ahead, two games ahead now of Gibraltar in third place. Let's roll the batting scorecard, and you can see that McNally, the only one to hit a boundary, she scored five. It's just a sign that... Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a rough night with the bat with Gibraltar, but they did learn a few things. I think their running and their intent was a lot better. Their backing up was better. Again, they're still learning some of those fundamentals. 23 extras in their score of 35. As far as the bowling went, I mentioned that Kayani, I thought for me, she was the best of the bowlers. She had three for five, but four of those were extras. So only one run off the bat. Apart from that, Kanchan Rana took two wickets. Singles for Chabto, Shukla, Vija, and Ravuri. And in the end, look, pretty entertaining game. I know Gibraltar, they'll be disappointed. Uh, they would have felt they want to get something 50-plus, maybe challenge their, their top score of 52. But, yeah, ultimately, I think the bowling was just a bit too good. And it wasn't just there were balls that were well pitched, but they also bowled a lot of kind of swinging deliveries that were swinging at the stumps, and that was a handful. Yeah, absolutely. The uh, ball movement in the air by the Swedes was phenomenal tonight. And I think it's all about just taking the little learnings, the little lessons for Gibraltar, those one percenters. Have a look at reviewing each game. And we are certainly seeing improvement. Saw a few more shots played last night. Yeah. So we certainly know they've got it in them. I think a lot of those shots, though, they were played off kind of short deliveries. Yeah. And they didn't get too many of those tonight. So no. it was hard going. Look, we'll take a break, though. And you don't want to miss the last game of the day. It's going to be Netherlands versus Italy. These two teams had a really interesting battle the other night. So expect some top-class cricket the other side of this break. Vinny Sandu here, Mr. Maximo, with Joe Wixani. Back shortly with more fan code. ECRW Gibraltar.
Hello and welcome back to the Europa Point Stadium right here in Gibraltar as we get ready for the second and final match of night number four. And this should be a real doozy. Two teams at the top of the table at the moment. They both have three wins. It's Netherlands versus Italy in match nine. I do have some toss news a little bit earlier. Babette later, standing captain for the Dutch. She won the toss and elected to bat. So there is some good news for the Dutch. Delater comes back in. Uh, and also, I think Stella Callas will also come back in. They've been struggling with illness, the Dutch, and I think they've lost the services of Van Berger tonight as well. So that's, that ain't great. They still don't have their regular captain, Heather Seegers, either. But I do think uh, a couple of big ins in Delater and Callas. But the Netherlands, Netherlands were really pushed by Italy last time that they met earlier in the week. And Italy, I think they would be better for that run as well. They'll know that the Dutch are a handful, but they are able to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I also don't think it's a bad thing that Italy will be chasing. They'll know exactly what they have to do and they're going to have to do it. Let's see if Regina Sudezai can turn on the magic as well. She's had a very good week with the ball. Probably love a few more runs though. But anyway, I think it should be a great game to finish the day here on ECN. Joe Wigasani is standing by and let's get ready for the first ball. The news from the toss is that Netherlands, they won the toss and they're having a bat. Yes, thank you very much. Vinny Sandu, Miss Maximo out there in the middle of the Europa Sports Complex. I'm Joe Wigasani. And here we are for this top of the table clash. It was a pretty tightly contested match the previous time these two came up against each other with the Netherlands just pulling away towards the end there. As we have a look at the fantasy dashboard for this upcoming fixture. And good to see those Dutch stalwarts back in the side. Babette de Leder, Sterikalis, Iris Zwilling. They'll all be playing a big part tonight. Good to see Sterikalis back in there as well. Of course, after that little stomach bug that's been going through the Dutch ranks. And for Italy, well, it was great to see Amelia Bartram really turn it on last night, putting on a good score as she took her side home to victory. And with the expected score, as calculated by, of course, Crickbot, who is somewhere in the mid-Atlantic, I assume, being... Shipped to Vinnie Sando, 89 for the Netherlands, 66 for Italy is what is predicted. Let's have a look how that matches up to the reality in front of us. It is Carlos out there with Babette de Leda to be opening the batting. And it will be incumbent upon the Italian team to really just keep their lines nice and tight. We've seen so much in this series how the Sundries can play a big role in your team's fortunes. So Amelia Bartram to start with, she's been doing a good job opening the bowling and the batting. We saw her get an early breakthrough yesterday with the ball. And certainly they will all be hoping that that is the case tonight. The two outfielders are a, in the third man position and then sort of whitish long off. Everyone else being inside the ring. Three on the leg side, five on the off. Everyone's out there. Let's play some cricket. So on this occasion, Delater just coming forward to the pitch of the ball, taking it on the up as it was dug in short and runs through for a quick single. And that was hit with some ferocity, but the intent to run as quickly as possible was definitely there and just goes to show that even if you hit it hard through this infield, you can take the opportunity for a run. So, Stara Cullis now. And of course, plays in the 100 over in England. Very capable batter. Is looking for that one, but then decides it is way out of reach. So far out of reach, in fact, it is going to be a wide. And it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a tense silence that's come upon the pitch here. The Italians not as chirpy as they have been usually, and this time, Carlos goes searching for it again. Fight, makes contact, manages to get a single. Running it down to the third man position. So, just, so far, Bartram just not quite getting that line right. Too far out the channel. If you're going to bowl that wide, you need to you need to put it fuller. So 
Now again, just wide and short outside off and cut ferociously down into the covers and they take that single once again. So the Dutch, Dutch batters here really going to show that you can find singles in the infield and it immediately starts to put pressure on the batters, on the uh, fielders. So this time, well, that one is a good delivery from Bartram. Kicked up off the deck and Cullis trying to play it down. Just catches the top end of the bat and pops up a little bit. No catching chances. There's nobody in that close, but good signs for the Italians. Halfway through the first over, four runs on the board. Bartram in to Cutlass. And this time just splays it away. And it's a great fielding attempt, but finds the gap, runs all the way to the fence. Four runs, what a shot. Cutlass just playing it off the back foot. It's beautifully square of the wicket as well. Great attempt by Regina to reel that in, but to no avail. First boundary on the board for the Dutch. Was batting a fair way outside her crease as well. So those shorter balls, well, we've seen them cause trouble. And even to some of the top batters in the tournament, those can certainly prove a handful, those shorter ones that stay low. And that bend on the stumps, well, despite the, the cross-batted shot, would have been out as it was. That is the end of the first. And the Netherlands, they're on eight for none. And coming into the commentary box, here's Vinny Sandu. Thanks very much. And have a look at Regina Sidizai. Eight wickets in the series. Head and shoulders above the rest in this contest. And I wonder if they might bring on a little bit earlier uh, to counter the top order. Delater and Callis back. They're the two top run scorers. The Netherlands involved in this game. Also got Ines Zwilling there in third place of the players playing tonight. Anyway, this looks like it's going to be Chaturika Mahamalagi, who's going to bowl over number two. Yeah, it was a great game when these two teams met the other day. And I think, yeah, Italy really, really brought it against the Netherlands. It's a nice little swing, but also a pretty good sweep shot. We've seen this. It's the, the diving, diving double foot stop. And because of that, the ball gets away. They get two. That's really good running from Babette Delater to get back. Yeah, so in that game, it was game three. It was 90-69, to 69, Netherlands winning. But they were certainly tested in that game, Joe. Yeah, they certainly were. What I really liked with that from the leader is how she almost went to, got in a position to play the pull shot, saw that ball was keeping low, and got down for the sweep, really adjusting well. Well, has this got onto the stumps? Oh, I think this might have... Not knocked the bales off. Yeah, let's have a look. This will show it. Oh, oh you've got to be joking. That's hit it pretty hard as well. Wow, that's unbelievable. Yeah. Oh, that's clocked Super disappointing. into him. I tell you what, Delayed, I can't believe her luck, tell you that much. Oh, now her luck's run out. She's taking it. It's a slip sliding catch. She's Ow, taking it. Hope she's all right. Soon as that goes <laughs> down. But I think she might have been hurt here. She actually slipped and she still kind of went for it and she crashed onto her back. That's hurt, but that's out. So... Delayed are the best of fortunes and the worst of fortunes in the space of 30 seconds, <laughs> and it's 10 for 1. Gee, what a wonderful piece of bowling, though, from Mahamalage, really putting this up, and the advanced shot getting the big leading edge, and what a grab oh, by Regina. Because she had two hands on the ball, she could not pr no protect herself, herself from the fall. So that's a proper spine smasher. But Sidisai knows what's important, holding onto the ball. She's up, she's about, so that's good. But what a catch. And Delayda, I mean, how quick can your luck turn around? I mean, she just basically got bowled, but the bales didn't fall off. And the very next ball, she goes, and look, Mahamalagi, it was all about the movement on that. There was that straight, straightening down the line that forced the slight leading edge and very useful wicket for the Italians. Yeah, absolutely. The breakthrough that they wanted. Italy and Mahamalagi doing the damage again. Can't keep her out of the game at all. We've seen that so far in the series. Now we've got Zwilling who comes in and hits the first ball pretty confidently out to Sonia Toffoletto. No, there's Gets something. Mark. Sorry, Vinny. There's, there's something here that it's definitely been a progression through this series. That, that long off is really wide. 
Yeah, and I think that's a tactical change from the Italians trying to counter that aggressive driving from the Dutch. Oh, another good ball. They go with the hit. Oh, oh. that might have been close, you know. Yeah, so what I like about this, Mahamalagi straightening it stump to stump, so it's a slightly, slightly risky shot. I think if that hits, she's probably gone. Didn't really get a good bat slide in. But, I mean, Callis is a class player, isn't it? Isn't she? You've seen that already with the, some of the stroke play. She's good enough to make sure she gets some bat on that. Yeah, they, they certainly have gone for that. That uh, kind of wider, more of a deep cover, isn't it, than a long off, really? Yeah. And yeah, it's like a deep, deep extra cover. Trying to cover the bases. Anyway, this will be the end of the over. 13 for one. So, yeah, Italy, remember the other night... Like I said, they they were pretty competitive. They held the Netherlands to 90, and they scored 69. Uh, I think from memory, there are quite a few off the last over in that. I think it might have been 19 off the last over. That's just from memory. And if they could have maybe held them down to something in the 70s or maybe an 80, maybe it maybe could have gotten a bit closer. But anyway, so far so good. But here is Villing. She is six foot tall and ready to smash. Here we go in over number three. It's Pedrick coming to the attack, the skipper. And gets the first one past the outside edge. Good areas. Gee, great ball that. Just rolling the wrist over it as she let it go. And, oh, had some nice movement as well. So, good start from Pedrick. Hello, Andrew Hogan, hopefully well. Hello to Mrs. Hogan, obviously. It's Pedrick. This time she goes straight down the ground and beats the field. It gets a hand on it, but it's not going to stop it in time. So, the first boundary for Iris who had the captaincy last night. She's handed it over tonight, but she still likes to score and score quickly. This is a good bit of placement. Great shot. Look at the inches by which a boundary can be determined. It's good effort from the fielder. Great effort, but just out of reach. Yeah, got to get these two quickly. Or it could be trouble. It's time. Nice footwork. Gets down, then swings across it. Just going with the movement. So Swilling goes back to back and moves into double figures. Yeah, look at this quick movement and just getting into position and holding her shape as well, really still as she hit the ball. Still in the power play, so only two outfielders for this over. Then you'll have the ability to protect the boundaries a little bit more with four outfielders allowed. Yeah, they brought that uh, deep extra cover back in. So it's just the two on the leg side now. Got it, just pulled a bit to the left. Already beaten her once outside off stump this over, Pedrick. Pet up. This one goes into the infield. Hits the stump. Zwilling gets through for the single. Yeah, see a little bit of basic here from Zwilling, who, well, lucky she had the foot in the first time. Because she did ground the bat. Nice throw. Yeah, they're active in the field. So you've got this, this mid-off and now sort of extra cover coming around again a little bit. But then long on, and there's obviously a directive to the mm. extra cover and the long on that if it is hit towards mid-off, to run as fast as you can to try to do the backing up. They really seem to be playing with some fielding tactics here, the Italians. Yeah, and, and bowling to the field there, just kind of cramping her for room. Uh, interesting, you could kind of see Callis. She looked like she wanted to go inside out. If she had any chance to maybe hit it through cover or over cover because there's no outfielders back there. But, yeah, the movement just kind of forced her to flick it away on the leg side. A couple of balls to go on this power play. Look at that great ball from Pedrick. And she moves the ball really, really well into the right-hander. So it's a bit risky, I think, bowling the power play, but not the worst over at all from Kamudu. She goes for nine. And at the end of the power play, but she goes for ten in the end. It's 23 for one. Apologies, our score seems to be a little bit slow catching up, but we'll head into the middle overs. Hello to a few people in the chat as well, Nico. Nice to see you back. Hello to Ayan. Hello to Shaquille Simanto. You thought there was a bit of jaunty roads yeah. about Regina's catch. I like that comment. And yeah, hello to Rahul. Saying the Dutch girls look tall. Well, they're the second tallest females in the world, according to our records as a nation, not least specific team, this specific team out here. Anyway, here we go. A lot of cheese. A lot of cheese in the diet. Yeah, I like that they bring Mahamalagi back, who was swinging the ball pretty well. Nice drive, picks out the field up. There's Kamudu Pedrick, the captain. Yeah, I don't mind that decision at all. Try to get another breakthrough. She did it in the first over, getting rid of the very dangerous um, Stereo Colors. 
Yeah. So it makes sense to bowl her out, try to make another breakthrough. Yeah, Babette got lucky when the ball hit the stumps, but then, yeah, it was a strange catch, really. I mean, losing your footing on this, you can't imagine that it's too slippery, but it's just one of those things, and Regina did well to keep her composure. Callis on strike. Oh, bold. I don't think there's anything but fresh air on this, but still a very good piece of bowling. Doesn't matter who you are. If you get it in the danger zone, just have a look at that curve. Also, very good keeping. Ratnayake, for me, has been one of the best keepers in the tournament. Very adept up to the stumps. But back to later back. A bit of a weapon behind the stumps as well for the Netherlands. This one turns into a full toss, which knocked out to Delisha Naniakara. So, yeah, certainly not quite the dominance. I think the Dutch would have been hoping for through the power play, but still two very powerful hitters at the crease. Certainly they uh, have it within them to take this away from the Italians pretty quickly, but the Italians are doing a great job, really cramping up the Dutch batters, Andrew just, in at their pads. Yeah, Andrew Hogan saying ball is getting massive shape in. Is that wind? Well, it's not too windy tonight, and actually you're seeing this, the ball being swung both ways. And, and the wind's coming from the other direction tonight. Yeah. It's coming from right Maha to Malagi's left. a natural outswing bowler, whereas Pedrick's a natural in-swing bowler, and they're both swinging the ball. They're kind of the regular ways, and it's going. Seeing that one moving away. And nice bit of fielding, but they're not going to get callous in time. Let's see how the Dutch do it here. We talked a lot about backing up, didn't we, in the last game. We kind of examined Gibraltar. See, Callis is there, and she never even thinks about turning around. When she gets the call, she goes and gets there easily. So I think that some of the other teams are, are getting with the program on this running between the wickets. It is really a fundamental. I think I mentioned that when I was a kid, sometimes we do entire training sessions just on running between the wickets and now I realise how boring that sounds but it's such an important part of the game especially in this form of the game where it's a bit chaotic must have helped you when you had to run for a bus at times <laughs> that's true I remember uh, once forgetting my hockey stick running home getting it running back to school and getting stopped by the police <laughs> well, for speeding <laughs> true story <laughs> <laughs> while I was running with a stick sounds like Perth profiling anyway here we go it's not a hockey Nice shot straight down the ground. This will take some stopping. And in fact, it won't be stopped. It just pierces long on and long off. Callis, class player. You can see the movement is there, but it's kind of predictable. And uh, Stara Callis, good enough to whack that one back over the umpire's hat. Yeah, had a few siders now. Has Callis, so certainly getting to the pitch of that and hitting it straight. Knew exactly where she wanted to put it, and that is where it went. It'll be good to see if Maha malaga has got a little bit of variation here just to... Play with the fact that Cullis' eye is in a little bit at the moment. Full toss. Down to the long off this time. So didn't quite get the length again. What you're ideally looking for is for it to bounce. So they're hitting on the up. As it is, we'll see more of Cullis because she'll be facing up at the end of four overs. The score is 30 for one. And, well, Joe, tell me about your day. What did you get up to today? Very relaxed, easy day, Vinny. Yeah, yeah I've got... So we're staying in this lovely hotel over in La Linea de, los, de la Concepcion. Yeah. Over in the Spanish border. And my room balcony faces the Rock of Gibraltar. Yeah, I've got a rock facer yeah, as well. rock facer. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I think you're a few doors down from me, actually. So I'll try, try, to, try to keep down. it quiet tonight. So my day involved visiting this wildlife park where I got a few answers... Because was, was, oh, there's yeah, a bit, okay, there's, the there was a bit of controversy debate. about the monkey ape debate. The first thing was, this was amazing, was the Alameda Wildlife Conservation Park. It's where they look after animals that that have been uh, kind of try, tried to be illegally smuggled in and they've confiscated. Here's Regina coming on over number five. Nice looking drive, gets the gap, and it'll go to the boundary. Left from Landagi. But this is a good shot from Callis who gets to the pitch. Yeah, we kind of mentioned last night, no one had been that proactive against Regina trying to disrupt her length. And you can see that's just a good, confident move forward. Yeah, this will be a real challenge for Regina. She's had the, had the golden arm so far in this tournament, picking up wickets with abandon. But at the moment, she is up against probably her biggest challenge yet. Yeah, for sure. But if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best. So that's a great opportunity for her. Bold. Yeah, pull it. Make it a little slower. Kind of tempting a repeat shot, but... Not there. So, yeah, went to this park, and I actually fed some lemurs. I might get a picture up at some point. 
I fed some lemurs, and we're talking about in the cage with the Proper lemurs, Madagascan. getting to know them. Their names were Spider and Boo, and another one that I can't remember. <laughs> Lovely lemurs. No, nice, no nicest favorite, lemurs I've ever met. <laughs> anyway, this one is going to be down. So what did you feed them? Uh, yeah, so oh, they're super clever. So these are lemurs. They were actually pets of uh, some people in France that were no longer able to look after them, so they've ended up at this wildlife conservation park. And it was actually a, a dad and a son and a daughter. Unfortunately, the mum passed away last year. It's a typical lemur family. <laughs> and Nuc- nuclear lemur So it was family. a mixture of grapes, uh, red peppers or capsicum, and sweet potato. Sounds and that's the order they liked them in. So they okay. actually were quite fussy. Yeah. I think they'd been kind it's of... It's almost the dessert first. Yeah. They were pretty... Yeah, they were pretty keen on the grapes. And then we turned down the rest till the grapes were gone. There's huh. the bat of God. Good shots. Yeah, this was going to be one anyway. So yeah, it's ben, not really ben a big deal. special. When you're hitting him well, sometimes you hit him well at both ends. And Callus is at the moment. Anyway, so... Oh, that sounds like a great day. So, yeah. some lemurs yeah. in but Gibraltar. That's just a fun aside. Well, was but that in Gibraltar seri- or Spain? There's a, that was in Gibraltar. Yeah. Nice shot. Leans on it. But there's a serious side to this as well. In fact, I might wait to look everyone in the eye and tell you. Because I was getting all sorts of hate mail when I was calling them monkeys. And people were saying, look, they're apes. They're not monkeys. They don't have tails. And et cetera, et cetera. 39 for one. And look, I'm going to welcome you into the commentary position right now. Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo. Joe Wigasani with me. No, I like to have fun like a lot of people. But sometimes we have to be serious. serious. I got told by an expert today. All apes are monkeys, but not all monkeys are apes. So anyone out there, Oof. anyone out there that said to me that I was wrong for calling them monkeys, you write in and you apologise. Was it an expert in they monkeys were a and wildlife apes? conservation <laughs> expert? expert. So there we go. I hate to point my crooked wicket keeper finger at you, but you know who you are, Corey Rutgers. And I'm just telling you. So nothing to do with the tails. Yeah, they are actually tailless monkeys. So it's actually an unusual uh, type of monkey okay. because it is true. Normally, uh, tailless. So all so apes are monkeys. Are apes. So all apes are monkeys. Everyone, so we're, so we're get your also pen monkeys. and paper out. All apes are monkeys. So we're also all. monkeys. Yeah, we. I guess so. <laughs> Speak for yourself. That's anyway, sorry. Great to have your company. Anyway, now we know. Hey, thank you very much, Vinny Sandu. Sometimes you got to really spell it out. Uh, look, I'm so wow. glad that you went out to do the research. Well, I'll tell you what, no monkeying around here because this one's gone miles. Maximo! What a way to start the second half of the innings. I think nine wickets in hand. They're going to go large. You can expect it. And Callis goes boom. Yeah, wonderful use of the feet once again from Sarah Callis. Well, Santosh is in the chat. Apparently had a question. Yeah, Put it in there again for me, Santos. I think the question is, can you answer his question? Is it Max? Is, is it monkey related? Monkey. I'm, it's a monkey or ape. Anyway, now we know. I'm, I'm and so I, I took a beautiful picture of one of the monkeys yesterday, didn't I? Put it in the group chat. Oh, shot. This is really good. It's going to be tough to stop, and it won't be stopped. Four runs. Great effort, though, from Toffoletto. But you see Callis. She's got all the shots, doesn't she? Certainly does. Okay. Playing all around the ground. Oh, I love I love the fact that you can now say monkey with such a self assuredness. Oh, just I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm no, just saying no. it with such freedom. Yeah. They're amazing though, honestly. I mean, we all know about the monkey crime syndicate and how they got my lunch yesterday, but I was I was better friends with them today. And we also I had some really unusual animals in there because people try to smuggle all kinds of things and this is where they end up. Obviously they can't really release them in the wild because they um, if they would they could. Uh, there was a lot of tortoises there. I saw a couple of peacocks. How do you smuggle a peacock in? I don't know. Yeah, with a lot of colours, you'd imagine. Batting this time. And this is going to be four more. Just waited on that long enough to beat the backward point. And Callis looks on a rampage now. It brings up the 50 for the Netherlands. And things looking dangerous. They badly need a wicket. Yeah, they certainly do. You might want to just think about trying trying one of their other spinners here. It is Nani Yakata. Who is getting the treatment a little bit? Ten off this the two. Oh, it's fourteen now. Three balls. Well, Santosh's question, question regards cricket in America. I'll come back to you then. The second Santosh. Smart batting, right? Did pretty well, <laughs> and Bartram does well to, to make the stop. I like the fielding here. Got down, got behind it with the with the whole body as well. At a Roman Campanelli Cricket Club as well, saying Forza Azure, Azure. Mouth imploded there, but. Uh, let me come back to you a minute, Santosh. 
More work for Bartram, who keeps it to one. Good fielding. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, one thing, just stay tuned. All That's all I'm going to say. I mean, ECN, obviously, you know, grown here in Europe, big European focus. But I think the time will come where we'll, we'll leave the borders. All right, well, that's a proper beam up. It's going to be four. And it's not going to get much better for Nani Okara because she's going to have to serve up a free hit. And that's not going to be an easy prospect to Callis, who's up and going. This one would have hit her right between the eyes, but she saw it really well and sends that one down towards the rugby goals. Yeah, always the problem when you just give a little bit too much of the air there, trying to, trying to create a point of difference, trying to mix it up, which is certainly what she has to be doing. But Callis is too good on that occasion. My last ball coming up. This free hit. Here we go. Oh, oh she missed it, but so is the keeper. And this is going to be four buys. So yeah, this is just a little bit of a technical thing from Ratnaika because she kind of expects this will hit something. You see how her feet mm -hmm. never move, and she knows it straight away. Her feet kind of never follow the line of the ball. She thought, well, it's going to be hit or it's going to hit the stumps, but it doesn't either. So, unfortunately, nearly leaking a few there. 64 for one after six. Yeah, a few coming off that one, and... So small chances, really, that you have to capitalise on when you're facing such a good unit as this Dutch team. Hang in there, Nico Fernando. He put the old face palm on there. I mean, yeah, it's an annoying thing as keeper when, when you do that because you kind of realise, hold on, uh, you know, Connor, Connor could have done a bit better. But uh, what, uh, what I would train keepers to do is pretend there is no batter, pretend there are no stumps. It's easier said than done. So that ball you yeah. just saw, she just stayed still. Like, OK, well, I won't be required here. And that's the ones that you do often miss between the batter and the stumps. Anyway, here's Regina needing a breakthrough. Oh, hit and run. And look how confident the, the Dutch are with their communication. There's no hesitation there at all. And Regina, well, she was in the commentary box the other night, did a very good job. She's enjoying her first week in international cricket. But, yeah, it's going to be a contest. And uh, that's what she's finding out right now. It's well bold, I think. Just kind of trying to tempt them into the shot. Uh, so Akmel Shahid saying, why are Tunbridge Wells not in the ACL? The answer is the whoever wins the Vitality T20 club competition in England, that's who comes. So Hornchurch won it last year. So that's the competition Tunbridge well, Wells won the year before. Oh, beautiful shot. Not a great really shot. good hands, a good placement. What a stop, though. I think she stopped this, Maha Malagi. And, uh, well, they're going to have a look at this. I actually think I had gave her no hope, to be honest. Let's have a look. Let's just have a look where she is. Is she on the field? Yeah, so far so good. Oh, uh, that I knee. Think, yeah. I think her knee is over just as she touches it, so it'll be four. But I tell you what, that was a brilliant effort. Brilliant effort. And it's nice to see Italy still throwing themselves around. You really can't fault the effort in the field by the teams or any of the teams, actually. There's been some... Certainly some physical acts. Now over the offside and curving away from the field. Oh. Again, brilliant effort. Oh, no good deeds going unrewarded here at the moment. Toffoletto tries to bat it back in, but that'll be four more. And right now, it's really hard to bowl to these two. Yeah, super difficult. They're going to have to really rack the brains for us to come up with a plan here as these two look set. That was great work, though, by Toffoletto out there in the deep. Unfortunately, unable to keep it in, but a really great endeavour. So you saw some Tortugas. I did see some Tortugas. Very, very, uh, very happy to hear about that day, Vinny. I'll tell you how many there were. Lots. Lots. So many. They had numbers on their shells. Really? And one of the numbers was 1,013. I don't know if that's some sort of code. So <laughs> I didn't see 1,000. I saw probably like nine. And I saw them moving around. So what's amazing about that to me, you know how my brain works, right? No, uh, I know exactly. At, but look, <laughs> look at the... Uh, there's a where we are in this part of the world in the Iberian Peninsula. There used to be yep. a Spanish king whose whose kid was sick, and it was decided the best remedy for him was turtles. He had to eat turtles. Wow! But they ran out of turtles in Spain. How hungry was this kid? Yeah, very very hungry. Yeah, he uh, he sent all the all the king's royal turtle finders out to go and seek the lakes and ponds for turtles. So it's good to hear that they, they don't have that problem anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, Lack these were attempted to be smuggled in, so I won't <laughs> get into it uh, completely. Anyway, seven overs down, 76 for one. Coming up tomorrow, well, it's a triple treat from The Rock tomorrow night. Friday night cricket, 
As the Netherlands, they're going to double up in matches 11 and 12. So three instead of the regular two games here. Sweden, Italy, that's a return of what we saw last night. I think Sweden, a bit disappointed they couldn't do better against the Italians. So a tricky one for Italy first up. They've just got the one game. Sweden play the first and third game. And Gibraltar, they'll have their final game of the group stage. Again, a pretty, bit of a tough one against the Netherlands in match 11. Join us tomorrow night, 4.30 GMT, 5.30 in Central Europe, 10 p.m. in India. For more, fan code ECIW action. Anyway, yeah, so I don't think these turtles were native to the area. But, I mean, they were getting around. It's they just were... good to know that there's no lack of turtles in Spain I mean, think of what else I saw. Saw some awesome talking birds. Just the old, hello. Oh, yeah. Hello. The old papa guy, the old yeah. parrots. Yeah, they're brilliant. Did they say anything else? No, they said hello and one said hi. Won't get them in the commentary box, yeah. though. Oh, you know who I... Saw? Oh, I can't remember what they're called. Little monkeys that look like Albert Einstein with tiny faces. Do you know what I'm talking about? Bonobos? Maybe. Yeah, that sounds about right. These things were all over the place. They <laughs> Very looked like, frisky. Looked like Doc Brown off Back to the Future. And they were just scampering around. Uh, they had these little tunnels, like kind of wire tunnels that kind of all around you. So they were still in, in cages, but, you know, there'd just be one scampering over your head. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. So this is the Gibraltar. It was the Alameda Wildlife Conservation Park, there AWCP, go, in the Botanical Gardens. Anyway, Bartram's back a little bit short, and this is going to be for Callis closing in on a half century here. Around the wicket, plan of attack. I think, you know, once it bounces outside the leg stump, you know, you can't be OBW. So Callis has immunity to swing away and gets a boundary. And one positive there for Bartram was the significant seam movement in with that ball. Certainly if she can push that up a little bit more of a full length and get that cutting away from the right hand as she'll be in with the chance. Thanks for all the questions in the chat. I'll try and get to as many of those as I can over the last three overs of this. Bartram needs to pitch it up here. Oh, Callis premeditates the ramp. I don't think this has hit bat. This might have hit her arm. See what the call is. The call is runs. So maybe a bit of glove there. So let me get through these questions. We've got uh, who's going to win ECS, Sweet United or Gozo Zalmi? Well, Gozo Zalmi may actually call it fourth. Qualified fourth. Royal Strikers in second. Uh, for me, Sweet United, you can't really go past a team that's undefeated. So I'll, that'll be my prediction. That's a safe one. Uh, but anything can happen. They'll have the day off tomorrow for finishing in the top two. This one's leaned on. I want to give a shout-out to all the Malta crew as well. They had proper fog this morning. First game was only five, five, uh, five overs. And I was saying, OK, how bad could this fog be, right? So I wanted a picture. It just looked like <laughs> the steam room at the hotel that we were in <laughs> while, uh, while we were washed out for three days. You couldn't see anything. <laughs> so glad they still got the games on, though. Yeah, good. Great effort by that crew over there. Oh, that one comes back. Not handled by Nyaka. They'll get a bite. So uh, big shout out to Rico as well. Doing a, a, a proper job over there in Malta. So just the elimination day tomorrow where... Eight will become four. What else have we got here? Uh, Steve asking, is the ECB that decided... Uh, yeah, essentially, every federation decides how the how the ECL qualifier works. Well, they nominate a team. Essentially, they nominate a team. And they'll have pretty much every different federation because every cricket competition is different. We'll have a different way they do it. It's pretty well bowled by Bartram. But now they're just taking off on everything. Good slide as well. I'm liking, liking that... That slide, and so do her teammates there. Is willing. Gets in. This is a bit better than just plonking the foot in. Yeah, I like it. Had to uh, get around. Yeah, so uh, some federations will be their 20 over winner, their 40 over winner. Sometimes it is based on ECS results or a mixture of these things. In Guernsey, it's mi the mixture. All right, this time it's a ramp that's gone slightly wrong, but not too wrong. It'll still get her four. And that's the old backwards drive from Zwilling, who's turning on the trick shots now. As it's 87, the Dutch up and away here in match nine. Yeah, this is really impressive from Colors. Just uh, getting down low in time, premeditated, but did really well to adjust to the line as well. And lucky not to get caught, but she, she tried that before, didn't she? Fortune favours the bold. Yeah, well, it was bold from Sarah Cullis. She tried that before and didn't get the ball that she wanted. You always want a little bit of length on that if you're going to play it. Yeah. Nice don't want to bounce up into the, into the helmet, that's for sure. 88 for one after eight. So they're going at that 11 and over. And, yeah, so yeah, 
Tunbridge Wells actually told me last year they were so disappointed they didn't win because then they could have automatically come back. Yeah. They said, Vinny, you don't know how hard it is uh, to to qualify in England. Of all the clubs in England to qualify, and they, they were they were heartbroken. They couldn't quite get over Pack I Care in the final. Uh, but, you know, looking forward to seeing Hornchurch. I've been having a few messages with them. I think they're, uh, they'll have the services of Adil Malik, who's Shoal Malik's brother, Shoal Malik, the Pakistan player. So that should be good. Anyway, Pedrick's back with a little in duckers. I think it's two here. They're going to take it on. Good throw. We'll have it gone. Oh, I think this might be gone. Direct hit would have had her, for sure. I still think this is pretty close. I mean, it's a good dive. It's a good dive. From Zwilling. She's got reach. This will be an interesting replay. Because she grabs it and it comes back a little bit. It takes a little bit of time to get it onto the stumps. Let's have a look. I think she's oh, I think home. She is... Oh, that's probably between frames. Just home. I think you've got to give that in. What a great dive. I mean... Great dive. Using all six unbelievable foot of her. Unbelievable work. Yeah. So, I mean, she probably doesn't realise how close that was. But, now yeah, we're talking microseconds there. Oh, okay. And 50 up. Second innings of this game. I've got some breaking news as well. Some breaking ECL-related news coming to you in the second innings. So stay tuned. All right now, let's watch Pedrick in the ninth. Breaking news update right there, folks. Well, the old reverse Malachi attempt comes up with nothing. Uh, Shariah Hassan saying hello. How am I? And uh, I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. Are you watching from Bangladesh, perhaps? You wanted me to say your name. Well, there you go, Shariah. I've said it twice. So welcome to the broadcast. Hope you're enjoying it. How are you enjoying this Women's International T10? Get one here. I don't think they'll get more than that. By the way, Callis has reached 50 on the quiet. I don't know how she snuck that one past yeah. us, but yeah, she's batted really well. 50 off 27 balls. It was that run out uh, attempt. Yeah. Anyway, with 10 balls left, I think they want to get up towards that 110 mark. That's well bowled. A little bit of extra bounce there. So, yeah, Pedrick, I've got to say her efforts have been pretty good. She's a real thinking bowler, Pedrick. You can tell Cogs are constantly working, trying to figure out a plan. And has been aware that you can get some good bounce just outside off. Oh, good yeah. stopping. Yeah, really good keeping. And Pedrick, well, like water off a duck's back. She looks cool as you like. Uh, Callis goes to the well once too often against the swing that does it. This is a good bit of keeping. And that's, that's really technically very good for Ratnayaka, who stays low. She doesn't snatch. She doesn't panic. She knows she's got time. So if she catches it cleanly, it's going to be an easy stumping. So she doesn't snatch at it. I really like that bit of work behind the stumps. But Callis makes a really good half century, but she goes for an even 50. She's the second wicket to fall. And it's 91 for two. Great knock, and you can hear the applause from her teammates as Callis wanders off the pitch. That was certainly something to set a foundation for this Dodge team. Just over, one, or just under one and a half overs to go. I'll certainly be looking to make the most of this. Plenty of wickets in hand to try to make an assault on one one ten plus. Now, Eric Overdyk coming in now. One thing I will say is that Adil Malik, who's played for Hornchurch, because some people are saying, oh, okay, they'll have no T10 experience. He's played in a professional T10 tournament before in in Abu Dhabi. So I mean, he'll have some and. I think if you're a short-form team, you're going to enjoy T10, even though it's obviously a bit different, but they'll have all the skills. This one's pulled a little bit wide. This is Frederick Overdyke. Nice to see her out there. Tell you what, I was watching her in warm-up. She was absolutely crunching them. So perfect time for her to come in. And I think she actually put some balls out of shape hitting into the concrete wall. Last ball this over. Catches it on the crease. Oh, has a good, good <sighs> think about this. A bit high. Uh, yeah, Pedrick. And I think this is a really good shout, to be honest. Uh, maybe a little bit high climbing. Oh, it's a good shout. It's a really good. You see, just had a few From doubts there. Just yeah, might mm, maybe be an issue. She's yeah, tall though. The more I look at that, the more yeah. I'm convinced that maybe she's a bit lucky to get away with that overdike. But the umpire gets one look, says it's not out. It's 92 for two after nine. Yeah, Sunil Ramachana there, the umpire. Done a very good job, though. ICC qualified umpire. Luke's got a really good 
point in the chat saying the new format in the ECL doesn't give teams much time to play themselves in. So that could be dangerous for teams like Hornchurch. Hornchurch. Mm, yeah, bit agree. Shorter, bit sharper. Yeah. You only get four matches and then finals. So remember that double chance is going to be super, <laughs> super uh, important. important. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he says that he's apologized. I'm just joking about the monkeys thing. I'm having a bit of a laugh. But I, I thought I was wrong. And then when I got told that today, oh, it was like <laughs> Christmas. I said, I cannot wait. <laughs> You print it out and put it on the wall. Made it sound like a statu all, statutory all declaration. Apes are monkeys, <laughs> all not apes are all monkeys. But monkeys, not all monkeys are apes. apes. All right, here's Sharon with the Nagi. Twelve to ten starts with a wide. Well, we're all one primates, really. Well, it's a super hard throw. Probably didn't need to be that hard. It's really get to the other end. I mean, pretty unselfish. Means Overdyke gets a chance here. Hello to Sajith Fernando. Saying, have to wait till September to see us again. Oh, we're looking forward to seeing you. Don't worry about that. Probably in Rome, I imagine. So, yeah, really good discussion in there. Cherry Hazen saying, is, is uh, Ratnaka the best keeper in this tournament? Uh, yeah, I mean, she's right up there. I think Babette Delater, though. Babette yeah. Delater, we only saw her really night one. I feel this is a really good decision to bring Vitanage on at this stage. They certainly could have done with it a little bit earlier. Yeah, true. But she, she causes troubles to the batters. She puts them in quite quick, and she gets through her overs fairly quick as well. Yeah, Babette Delater, I think, is pretty good with the gloves as yeah. well. Uh, so, again, let's just appreciate that they're both very good keepers. Get the over here. Going for it. Kind of dragging it off the inside half of the bat. I don't think they'll get a chance to even go for two here. Yeah, but Netherlands has been pegged back a little bit, but just a little bit, I suppose. It's been a good couple of last overs to uh, pick up that wicket and stymie the flow of runs. Yeah, stay tuned for that ECL bombshell. I'm not going anywhere. Coming up. Yeah, well, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> anyway. Yes, the volcano's in the chat, Sajith. Hello to you. Okay, just pointing that out. Oh, it's one. <laughs> She's not, was, wanted a run out chance, but the thing with Zvilling is about, you know, she goes six metres in about three steps. <laughs> just moonwalks yeah. back into the crease. Using the feet, but yeah, with Nagi really not putting too much on the ball, making the batters make the pace. We saw that be pretty effective in the Gibraltar uh, ECT 10 series, right? Just bowlers taking the, Take the, taking the air right out of the ball. Yep. This is hit well. Oh, but what catch. a good catch. Regina Sudazai takes it cool as you like, and this time she doesn't have to land on her vertebrae <laughs> as it was <laughs> absolutely smacked towards her. Overdyke can't take a trick, really. And uh, this is... This is a hard catch, Vinny. Oh. We've seen them coming in this direction so often at this ground where they've gone through the fingers, just hit flat and hard. Yeah, it's feeling actually yep. that, that that hits that and picks out the fielder. I mean, a couple of metres either side. I don't think Regina has a play on that. But she's caught really well. Remember, it's quite a brisk night here in Gibraltar. That is the third wicket. And Sharon with Nagi gets on the wicket takers list. It's 30. It's uh, 97 for three. There's one ball remaining. Yeah, you know, and, uh, we've uh, said it a couple of times, all the different teams here at different stages in their development. But with the catching, it's one thing that I, I think maybe Sweden and Gibraltar can look at a little bit is not not feeling rushed or hurried to catch a ball. Regina did really well just to wait for it to come to her and cool as you like, just staying calm, letting the ball come to you. All right, so Eva Lynch gets one chance. I reckon she's going to dance and she's going to try and smack it through the rugby goals. Let's go. Just tries, but slides into the pad. I'll just get one leg by. Probably need to hold this. Oh, he's coming back for the second, though. <laughs> no, just the one will do. So, look, they do pretty well in the end to hold him to yeah, 98. Right. I think Nagi bowls are very good over. I think, you know, if you look at the way that innings looked like it was going, and they were 88 off eight, and they were on target for 110. But in the end, just four and then six off the last over. So they get 10 off the last two. Holding the double digits. Italy, well, you never know if they can get going. This could be done, but they're going to have to bat really well. Let's go back to some of the highlights. And really, a bit of a, a masterclass by the top three. Hit the ball pretty well. I think that Italy did their best. I like the kind of the efforts in the field. Throwing themselves around. We saw Babette get lucky. The ball hit the stumps. It would have been bold, didn't the bails off. She went to a very good catch from Sudasai at first of two catches. But, yeah, then this partnership was key, wasn't it? Callis and Zwilling really took the game, and they took the game on through the middle overs and actually built a pretty good foundation for this total of 98.
Yeah, certainly this top order of the Dutch lineup have shown themselves to be incredible da incredibly dangerous, but once they uh, started going out, well, it showed that the Italians were able to put a little bit of a clamper on. It's a few balls are going awry there, and Stara Colors, and with a good help as well by Iris Zwilling, really finding the gaps in the field, managing to hit it all around the place with a bit of creativity, going fu getting funky as well. As you see with that nice little ram shot. I like this. Great run out as well. I think this villain got a bit of a wake-up call when uh, when she almost got run out earlier when she just plonked her foot in. Great bit of keeping there to get rid of Callus, but her 50 was brilliant. Also, very nice fielding from Regina on a bit of a cold night to grab that one because it was motoring. So, in yeah, the last two overs, just bringing it back in. It's kind of the opposite to what happened last time these two teams played, where Italy really let Netherlands off the hook. I think it was 19 off the last over on that occasion. So, they do come back, no boundaries in the last two overs. And Netherlands end up on 98 off their 10 overs. Italy will be on the rack next. But let's have a look at the scorecard. Stella Callis with 50 off 29 balls, eight boundaries and a six in there. She's a real class player, isn't she? And Iris Zwilling with 31 of 22, with four boundaries of her own. Apart from that overdike, unfortunately it's one of those nights where she hit it much better in the warm-up than she did in the game. She finished with two not out. And Babette Delater, acting captain tonight, in the absence of Heather Seegers, is only able to contribute four. Or she got caught at backward point. As far as the bowlers went, wickets for Mahamalagi, Pedrick, and Witten Nagy. So, kind of a case of the haves and have-nots, wasn't it, as far as the bowling went. Uh, but I think they'll at least feel Italy, they've got a shot at this, especially because they kept the Netherlands under 100 due to a very tight last two overs. Yeah, they'll certainly want to come out and show relevant intent and aggression to try and chase this down. I think it's all going to be about the power plays here. Power play overs, Vinny, trying to really capitalise on only having those two fielders outside the ring. Yeah, so we'll take a quick break. We'll be back as we head to the last innings of the night coming up. It'll be 99 for Italy. Can they snatch the points and be a boil over? But I tell you what, the kettle's on, and we hope you can join us as we'll return very shortly with the final innings of Match 9. Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo, with Joe Wigasani. See you shortly for more fan code, ECIW Gibraltar.
Hello, welcome back to Gibraltar. Great to have your company on ECN. Here we are, Thursday night cricket, live from the rock. And now we are getting ready for the conclusion of match nine. Well, all the nines, 99 required for Italy after keeping Netherlands to 98 in the first innings of this game. Top two teams in this tournament to this point doing battle. Iris Feeling's going to open the bowling. She's normally a handful. Sharon Witnagi got a really good last over. She's going to Commence the battle for the Azuri. As you get ready for the first ball. Should be a good one. Italy need a good start. They don't want to fall behind against the Aranya. Let's roll. Here we go. Ten overs of cricket to come. A pretty good shot. A ball that swinging in towards the stumps. Good chase though, Lynch. Made sure that it's only a single. Or maybe not. <laughs> three backup fielders. They needed all three. It was the third in line that was able to make the stop. Yeah, look, thought that was four off the bat, but didn't quite get the middle on it. Even then getting some good movement. It's great to have her up in the comedy box, actually. A couple of nights ago, she was one of the non-sick Dutch, and yeah, still a bit of a, a virus going through the, the camp. Still regular Captain Heather Seeger's not here. Van Boca as well is not Taking her place in the lineup tonight. It's a nice, nice ball. The length is right this time. We see the feet not really moving. That's Ratnaika who's out there. Third man and fine leg, the two fielding positions outside the circle in this first over. You've got to be busy here. Pretty much need that one boundary and over just to keep you on pace here. Probably want more than that in the power play. Don't really want to let the Dutch bowlers dictate terms. You can see Swilling, she's just built for pace, isn't she? It's good rhythm, good movement. Just off a short run, but he really has a nice tall action. Great shot. Just a little bit short. And with Nagi was onto it in a flash, and this time it was close in the middle. The first boundary of the chase. Italy believe. It's probably three-quarter stump height, but then I suppose so is Sharon Witnagi. <laughs> so she's able to turn that into a pullable ball. Hello, Chris. Nice to see you in the chat. Hopefully you're well. Hello to Archer and Yancey as well. See the adjustment from Zwilling. He pitches it up a bit. Again, good running. They get through for a single. And I want to welcome everyone back to the chat. Kitty's getting a bit excited by the 99. That's a very famous number in cricket, of course. I think, yeah, when you've got a big problem, you break it down into manageable chunks. And I think, you know, you go for that 10 and over. At the moment, they made seven off five. Again, to back away from that Nike probably isn't really on. She can't catch up with that one. So not a bad over at all from Zvilling, but she can't make the breakthrough. And it is seven for no loss after one. And so, it's a reminder of where the golden ball count is at. We haven't had a golden ball in Gibraltar, despite having been here over a month now. But here's something eerie. It's 23 matches without a golden ball. Today is the 23rd. 
Just saying. Nape hits all lined up. Of course, if we do get a golden ball, that's a tiebreaker if the scores are tied. Batting team will need two runs off an additional delivery. Otherwise, the fielding team will win. Here we go with over number two. And it's Van der Voning who has to pull out at the last moment. Yes, okay. Seven's okay. But you need to get some double-digit overs in here. They do have some good batters, though. You've also got, uh, got Pedrick there. You've got Sudazai there. Should be an interesting one. Money car is another one I'd mention. Goes in. This is good stuff by Witnagi. He's able to get some bat on it. These are the kind of balls that if you're not really on, you're missing them and they're, they're clonking you in the body. Kitty's saying, does anyone know this song by Toto called 99? Well, I don't know that one. I know no 99. I know 99 Red Balloons which Steve's mentioned. Okay, I've got one for you in the chat. Last news of the day. Random questions, random topics. A ball by Van der Voning. Puts everything into that one. And you can see. Yeah, right now, I can. Feet not really going at the moment. He's struggling to get bat on ball. Here's my challenge for you in the chat. Give me songs with numbers in the title. And I'm going to start you off. I'm going to say... Is that one that goes one, two, three, four, five? Is that in the title? In the air. Almost caught. It's gone all the way. Maximo. All right, Naka. Needed something to go her way, and this does. I mean, not really in control of the shot, to say the least. It loops away and just carries Villing. Well, if anyone was going to catch that, probably Iris is the one that will catch it. Sticks out their hand, Statue of Liberty style. I can't pull it back in and just the break Italy needed. Oh, yeah, okay. It's called Mumbo number five. <laughs> the one that I was thinking of. But that's the challenge I'm giving you guys. Oh, bit of luck. And this is going to be four more. Well, Naka goes six and four. Using every part of the bat. Again, that footwork going outside leg. Probably a bit of a risky strategy, but... Pays off, found Voning. Serenity now. It's probably what she's saying to herself because she can't believe she's gone for 10 in the last two balls. I'm going to throw one more in. Five, six, seven, eight by steps. Now it's your turn. Goes after this and oh, it's been put down. Overdyke got two hands to it. I think normally she'd fancy her chances of, of holding this. Gets there. On the move, look, not an easy catch, but yeah, the level the Dutch want to play. I'm sure that Coach St. Jane Dietz has put that in the book. as a missed opportunity. Brings Witnagi back. Oh, another French cut. And this time they brought the, the fine leg a little bit finer, so it makes the stop. Look, I just think you look at the footwork. It'll be the end of the over, in fact. It'll be 20 without loss after two. So they're on the on the pace. But have a look at the footwork here. See how that little shuffle away from the ball, probably not helping. It just means that you're less likely to kind of get inside balls going down the leg side. It probably just gets you in trouble more than anything. Anyway, look, they are at the pace. And look, there's really no excuses for these guys not to try and stay at the rate. When you look at the batting they've got to come, you can't afford falling behind in the game. That's just what I feel at the moment. But at the moment, 20 without loss after two. Not a bad place to be. Now, Caroline DeLange is going to bowl the third over. She did this so well the other night with her spin. This is stroked away, and this is going to be a boundary. And this time it does work. Okay, against the spinner, you've got a little bit more time to get in position. And then it was all about the placement. DeLange wasn't the worst ball. But at her pace, you know, that length, you can turn it into a short wall with good footwork. That wall's good footwork from Witnagi. He moves to 12. Joins Ratnaika there. Hit and run. We go to the bowler's end, but safely done. That was all about the, the positivity, early call. And I'm loving the fact that we've got all of these number songs in the chat. You guys have answered the call. 21 Guns says, 
Rick. Wow, this one probably dips. It's Lundier out there who does the fielding. Airmails it over to later. Able to play a pull here, but she's on the charge. I think, yeah, that one would have been coming down. Good proactive batting, though, to get it on the full. Again, those are the kind of balls that if you're really on, you can maybe hit them out of the ground, but they'll settle for a score. Should be a good battle. It's good length. And that's one that you can't really cut that easily because it is quite full. What else have we got here? We've got summer of 69, 10 green bottles. That's a good one by Chris. 19th nervous breakdown. I don't know about that one, Alan. This is another little dropper from Delanger. Looks like they're going to be full tosses sometimes, but just drops, and that became a ball that kind of yorked the batter. Again, this one doesn't get up at all. So this is what she's so good at. That'll be the end of the power play. The score is 26 without loss. Only six off that one. Any sound of him, Mr. Maximo, joining me back after a spot of dinner, Joe Wigasani and Joe. Now Italy, not sitting on their hands in this power play 26, and just a handful behind, but it's game on here. Hasn't this been absolutely fantastic thus far, Vinny Sando? Well, these two certainly going about with the right sort of intent and using that pace. Isabella Thunderbolting was bowling with incredible yeah. pace just then. She was getting him through, wasn't and she? And really using it. It'll be interesting to see how they continue to go against the slow bowlers. It was yeah. pretty good off Delanga just then. Delanga's been good at bowling that third over, hasn't she? Yeah. So I'll put the challenge out to all the viewers. Give us songs with numbers in the title. So that's a challenge for you as well, Joe, if you can think of any. Anyway, here we go oh. with Lynch. Over number four. So four outfielders can be employed now by Babbitt to later. First one charged and run. Just a single. I've got some more. 33 by Smashing Pumpkins. In the year 2025, 2525, says Christian Cool. Disco 2000. Uh, two become one by Spice Girls. Wow, there's so many of these. I don't have time to read them all out. I'll come back to a few in a minute. This one's hit and it's gone. And it's straight to Callis, who's having a very good night so far. 50 with the bat. Ratnika gets to 13, but it's unlucky for her. In fact, it is Sharon Wittenagi. As they cross on that first ball, but nice catch by Callis. We saw one go down earlier, but Sarah makes no mistake. The opening partnership broken. 27 for one. Yeah, disappointing, but Ratnayaki and Vitsanagi certainly did the job there to start with. Wow, this is great. Chris Smith, tell me if you're thinking of these or if you've gone to old oh, Dr. Google, Chris, because I think you've pumped out so many in such a quick amount of time. I think we'll be testing your B What's sample. Well, look, I, I've got to say, those regular viewers and listeners will know that numbers are not my strong point. My first reaction was ABC. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> I, I guess it's got one, two, three Jackson in it. Five. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I've got one. It's got, got It's got numbers in it, but one is written and one is typed as a number. Skater boy? No, that's a good one. But, I mean, it's not really a number. No. Well, that's been called a wide, a harsh one for Lynch. 46 and two by Tool. Okay. I, it's honestly too many for me to read out. I've turned something crazy. How about Fifth Symphony? <laughs> yeah, Beethoven's Fifth Cla clarinet. Class classical, <laughs> classical yeah, music fans having a heater Just here. Let me Just let get my Debussy <laughs> playlist up. <laughs> anyway, they're probably using typewriters anyway, yeah. so we probably won't see them in the chat. That's fine. Well, you asked me what I was doing today. Pretty much sitting, sitting, looking at the rock, listening to classical music. So, oh, nice. Could have been one of those with the typewriters. So I'm, I'm in a big classical versions of pop songs phase. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm working, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. I studied classical music at school, so been there, done that. Yeah, fair enough. Shot, and that's into the gap. That's going to be four, and look, they need someone to step up. And well, Ratnaka and Sudazai. They're certainly very capable of putting on big runs here. I like this because it's towards the ball, that footwork from Metnara that time. Gets the reward, gets the placement, and gets four. Yeah, good to see sort of coming up up the order as well. We saw her come out fifth the other night and get a little bit cramped with the needs at the end of the innings. This was clunk. They're going to go on contact, forces the fumble. That's Lara doing the fielding. So, yeah, Chris, I'm not 
going to falsely accuse you. He said all the ones he posted are in his music collection. So I believe you, Chris. You're a man of many talents. Anyway, it is the end of the over. It's 34 for one after four. So it's pretty simple. You want to be at 10 and over. So they're six behind where they need to be at this stage to be exactly on the rate. How about nine to five by Dolly Parton? That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I remember working nine to five when I was in Malta. Now I'm working know, five to nine. <laughs> five to nine. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> five to nine. Yeah, so Benedict Chambers saying he uses an abacus. <laughs> so he's watching from Sweden. Hey, it's good if you can use it. Anyway, game on here. Should be able to calculate a few things. Like at the moment, Italy needing 65 runs. It helps to be good with numbers if you're playing short form cricket. <laughs> anyway, here's Hannah Landia who's going to bowl over number five. Edged and four. Gee, that was a big edge. <laughs> you can need a bit of luck if you're going to chase down this ton score. And they've had a bit so far. You can see this time just out of the grasp of a bit delayed. Great effort on the boundary. But again, trusting on the pace of the bowler to be able to, if you get something to it, there's no slip. There's very few uh, chances of getting caught in the outfield because, of course, only four fielders are allowed out there. So swing the bat heavy and yep. hard at the fast bowlers. It doesn't really get up. I think I'll just get one. So soon as I will be on strike now. What I really like is that they're being proactive in this chase. They've got the 10 wickets. They're not afraid to use them. You don't want to fall behind. They pretty much haven't at this stage. Anyway, so ECL breaking news. I promise it's second inning. Shrug has just reminded me. I was going to hold it for the halfway point, but I'll, I'll give it to you now, Shrug. Here's Landia. This one's just helped to the leg side, just a single. So, if you remember originally the Spanish qualifiers, I'm not talking Pacquiao Care because they're the European qualifiers, so Spain get a slot. It was meant to be Gracia. They won the, the T10 qualifying tournament back in early November. Uh, but then they could not resolve the issue with the Cricket España, and they do not fall under the Cricket España umbrella anymore, and therefore they... Don't go, we need a Catalonian they don't, they don't team. Call, yep. It's hit hard, and now we've got a bit of trouble, but it goes to the wrong end. And then it was meant to be Badalona. Then Badalona Shaheen yep. were second in that tournament. Also a Catalonia club, but they were uh, affiliated with Cricket Espana. But I have had information today that Badalona Shaheen are unable to resolve their issues with Cricket Espana. And so they are also ineligible to be put forward by Cricket Espana. Oh, good oh, ball. Really well kept down, actually, <laughs> by Ratnaka. That was biting back. Wow. Landia, we've seen some really good seam movement in this... In this tournament, just watch this go. That is not like a spinner. No. It's not a cutter. That just genuinely comes off the seam. And I suppose it was just short enough for at night to react. I really like her action, Lund here. And she really, really mm. attacks the crease. Pitches up. Well, what a shot that is straight what down shot. the ground from Ratnaika, who took it on and absolutely pounds this one straight back past the bowl of four runs. This is absolute cricket here, Vinny. Just giving herself the room, trusting her eye, and hitting it into a gap. Wonderful, wonderful cricket. Not a bad ball either. Yeah, so that will be the end of the over as well. So it's 44 for one after five. We'll come back to the ECL news in a minute. First, let's have a look at Elimination Day tomorrow from Malta. And we have teams five, six, seven, and eight fighting it out in the first half of the day for the right to survive to the afternoon where they'll face either the Southern Crusaders or Gozo Zalmi and the winners of those... Uh, eliminates three and four, make it into the semi-finals where they've got the top two teams waiting. Delanga is coming back, and this will be one. Uh, so because of that, the third team in that tournament, Sporting Alfaz, will be representing Spain at the ECL. So it's just a, it's not a great situation, to be honest. I, mean, I know politics exist in, in almost every country I've seen and I've been to many, but I mean... I suppose a great opportunity for Sporting Alphaz and let's see who they turn out. They normally have Christian Munoz Mills, Spanish captain in their team. Uh, he was meant to play as a wild card for pa Pac I Care, so I don't know what that situation will be now. In the air and oh. not quite. Now it's running away. I think would've, it'll just be two. Would have been an be, absolute be, scream at be one part of eight. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. what They've really been throwing themselves around, but I really like the approach as well from Italy because they're not going to fall behind without a fight. No, they're going in absolutely everything. Yeah, disappointing news there regarding the Spanish selection. Sad not to see Mohamed Baba and Maxi Hook in the action. Yeah, Baba Khan. Yeah, and Maxi, yeah, I mean, 
I just hope it's resolved sooner rather than later because we love uh, Barcelona cricket. And we understand. I mean, we're not really privy to all the issues, but they've been working hard to find a resolution. They haven't been able to at this stage. Yeah, I like the, the idea to come down to Delanger, but a couple of times she's just dropped those balls into the block hole. I really like the situation for Regina Sudazay in that she doesn't have to take it all upon her shoulders in yeah. the circumstance. Right now, Alka's doing a great job out there. She just has to keep ticking it along and not allow any dot balls. As long as the sort of ball, you always have to wait for a bad ball. She's, it's really hard to get after it. She bowls well. See, once again, it's a hard ball to get under. See, so you're not quite sure which way it's going to where it's, where it's break. She bowls a lot of top spinners. I think she's bowled really well in this series. Keeps it very low, that head action as well when she comes in. Yeah. Very, stays very low. Makes it very difficult to face. Right, creeping towards the tour ball. I mean, I like the approach of Italy, though. This is what we saw from them the other night as well. And they were they were not afraid to take the game on and, and take on the fielders running between the wickets. Steve said he will be coming to the ECL. He was asked by the robot. He's going to come for Group F featuring Warash. See, I thought the breaking news, Vinny... We'll come back to that. Goes after this, but finds the fielder. Zvilling does the rest. Ratnaika batted well for 30, but they're going to need another hero to get him close here. And Zvilling, well, it's a good pair of hands, isn't she? And you can just see, judged it perfectly. We've seen a couple of fielders kind of run in too far and have to double back, but she judged that perfectly. Ratnaika has to go, and at the end of six overs, it's 49 for two. Yeah, she would have had that sinking feeling of despair as she realised she'd hit it down the throat of the tallest player out there. Pretty good <laughs> Not shot. Going over. Yeah, just the placement. No. It wasn't there. It went straight to the outfielder and the field well placed by Bebet Delater, who is captaining the Netherlands in the absence of regular captain Heather Seegers. So 49 for two. You need 50 off the last four. So 12 and a half and over. You need one big over. Yeah. One, one big one over. Round 20, 15 to 20, just to keep them in it at this stage. It can get taken away so quickly. Get you back on. Get you back on track. It's going to be Lund here, continuing. Yeah, so, I mean, I know Corey's communicated to me as well that he thinks it's an awful situation for the players because they're kind of caught in the middle. And the players, you know, they just want to play cricket and they want to be able to be involved. And there's these these issues that they're caught in the middle. A lot of them, uh, their teams are related to their jobs, and you know they're in a yeah. really bad situation. A lot of them, it's affecting their national section for T20s. And they just want to play cricket. I mean, at ECN, we just have to deal with the official federation of the country, Cricket España, and so we kind of have to be led by them. And yeah, it's just unfortunate. I really do feel for the players because they love being out there, and I just hope that. And ultimately, there's a resolution that means we can see the whole gamut of cricket talent in Spain. So, anyway, that's the way it is, and that's the news tonight. Here's Landia back for the seventh. Pretty well bowled. Going to take it on anyway. Have a pop. This would have been gone, but that's smart. I think you need to take these on at the moment. you got to keep that score ticking and find those one or two boundaries and over. Probably two boundaries and over now. Yeah, they certainly uh, will need that at the very least, Vinny. Yeah, it is a real shame, but we do know that, you know, cricket and politics have always intermingled across yeah, the planet. It just goes to show that, you know, the ACL is making a stamp. Well played by Regina. Yeah, it was biting back at it, but she does get it's one. Pulled out of the shot a bit. Where are these boundaries going to come from? That's the question. I mean, a couple of sixes here can change everything. It'll be fighting to keep the flame alive. Yeah, you just hope their big power hitters haven't already gone back to the shed. Oh, these two can go it. A wide, I think. Just a little bit too wide from Landia. Yeah, but I, I like the, her bowling as well. I like the pace. Again, just the line a little bit off here, but the length's decent. Certainly kind of beating that horizontal bat for bounce a fair bit. Yeah, occasionally just falls away a little bit to the left. And she comes through to finish her follow-through, but otherwise very, very good bowler. This is going to be gone. Oh, it's just sliced down too. the throat, and Rolandia, right full toss, does the job. And Overdyke, finally something goes right for her. 
and she takes it well. <laughs> and a uh, few smiles around the Onranya as it is the end of the captain, Kumita Pedrick. She's going to have to go for just one, and Italy lose their third. It's 53 for three. Yeah, great solid catch in the outfield there. You can see that it is swirling around here still. We've got that constant wind changing directions as well. Makes it very difficult to catch. Well held there. So they're on the back foot now. Bartram coming out. She has been at the top of the order. She made a good most 40. usually. Yeah. Last made a night. Good 40 last night. Yeah. 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 Mithnara Ratnayaka is the power hitter. Says Nico. Well, she certainly played some nice shots out there. 30 off 19, four fours and a six. She's the only one to clear the boundary so far. In the first innings, Callis hit also hit a six. But yeah, Sidis has played some nice shots in this tournament so far, but she needs to get going and quick. Amelia Bartram's joined her. The two of the UK base players come together. And you can see it's just not going to be easy. Good teams, when they when they smell they're on top, they try really hard to bury the opposition. That's what the Dutch are trying to do right here. Around the wicket land here, the left-hander. Shot, though. Really good shot for one. But confident shot, at least. Bartram gets off the mark. Yeah, they need to make the most of the fact they've got a right-hand, left-hand combination out there now. Really try to keep, keep it ticking over so that they can play with the bowler's head. Make sure they don't settle into a rhythm against just the one of them. Yeah, Regina needs to find some of her Monday night magic here. Still chasing that magical over. Might get them back in this. Haven't had any boundaries now for 11 balls. It's a bit wide, I think. Mostly over the line, a little bit outside. Yeah, look, you just want to be hitting the ball hard. Hit it correctly. Seeing what can happen here, but that run out required's gone out to 14 now. Been doing a great job, our umpires. It's yes. Sebastian Maynard and Sunil Shamarama. I see there. Sunil back as well. Yeah, great Got a gauge Sunil. recently. It's a pull shot. They're going to have a pop at this. And they'll get home safely. So it's the end of seven overs, and the score is 56. For three, three overs to go coming up tomorrow night. It's a triple treat of ECIW action from Gibraltar. The host just playing the middle game against the Netherlands. As for Italy, they just play the one first up against Sweden. Sweden have a couple, Netherlands have a couple. They are the last group matches tomorrow night before we head into finals night on Saturday where there'll be a third place playoff involving the third and fourth teams. Then there'll be the final, first ever ECIW final on Saturday night. Uh, the top two teams obviously automatically qualify. Also, it's finals day in Malta on, on Saturday. Don't forget also, elimination day in Malta tomorrow. So, things getting real here. We're only four days away, four sleeps away from the ECL as well. Here's Lynch in the eighth. Yeah, so here's the thing with Regina. She's a good batter, but I think at this stage, she just has to trust herself to, to go through with those attacking yeah. shots rather than bailing out. out. Yeah. That's one. She hasn't got to the pitch, but she's powerful enough, I think, to drive that straight back over the bowler's head for six. Yeah, look, it was really clever bowling by Eva Lynch to drop that in a little bit shorter. Saw her coming, but like you say, just trust herself back her power as well. It's a hard thing to do to basically throw away the, the safety latch and just say, look, I'm going to accept whatever happens here. Because she was in a position there. She could have driven that straight down the ground in the air, but she kind of just decided, actually, you know what? Not quite there. And that's what you'd normally do. You'd look for the big shot and then back out if it's too risky in a longer game of cricket. Yeah, but that extra sort of 10% aggression and uh, throwing caution to the wind a little bit. We saw it with Sharon Vitanaga. It really came off for her. She was batting with a lot more freedom tonight. Is down the leg side. Nice bit of keeping from Babette to later. We haven't had too much to do tonight, Babette. But she's very, very good back there. Bartram needs to try and hit one of the playground here to the left of the screen. That could be gone. Looking pretty good for me. Wow. Maybe. I don't know about leg. this one. Maybe. I, mean, I think it hit in line. Yeah. For me, I think she's a bit lucky. And we're a bit lucky. Mm. I mean, quite hitting, hitting, lucky. Yeah, definitely hitting I line. don't think it's hit her outside the line. No. don't think there's any bat in it. 
Anyway, you make your own luck. And so Bartram says, yeah, no problem. Maybe it's my night. Uh, she sends this one to the boundary. Yeah, did very well to get into position there quickly, seeing it was going down the leg side and whipping it away to the boundary. And maybe it was going under. Who knows? <laughs> going under the zones. Yeah. Well, I would have been asking can't, the can't umpire if, if I was wicket keeping. Can't go around was it. Going under. <laughs> well, maybe they thought it was going to hit the bottom of the stumps and not knock the bales off. <laughs> so Reddy had one of those tonight. Yeah, well, it's, it's almost the, the reverse to what happened there. Well, oh, that's asking for it as well. And that will be another boundary. So back to Matt Bartram, trying to pull something from the fire. It's last chance saloon for the Azuri, but Amelia with two fours keeps him in the hunt. Yeah, we saw she's, this is a particular strength of hers on the leg side, and then swiveling around and playing it backward of square. She did it really well last night in that 40 odd that she made, and seems to be continuing on her fine work. Just something I noticed from Lynch, you know, follow through. She did kind of, she didn't really get off the pitch quickly. I don't know if she impeded the umpire's view of that. Something she has to watch when she goes around the wicket. You kind of see it there. Yeah. Well, this one gets past the later though. This could be four it is. So I think this is be four buys. Wow. Wonderful yeah. effort by Mickey's feeling there. But. Yeah. Just let me see, look at Lynch. Look where Lynch goes after she bowls this. And you see how she then takes a step, and I think yeah. just... You see the umpire having to lean to the yeah, left. Yeah, that explains why it wasn't given out, yeah. or at least created doubt where you didn't get a good look at it. Anyway, bit of a bonus on this one. Could be more runs. It's four more runs. Well, wow. is this the over they needed? Well, at the moment, they're starting to believe as things have gone off the rails. That's four fours in four balls. Three of them have been hit. And Lynch has gone for 18 in this over. Yeah, the two young guns out there. And this is exactly what Regina needed, is Bartram to come out and take that role. Yeah, so that's, that's the end of the over. And yeah, a bit of a disastrous one, really. 74 for three off eight. So now you need 25 off two overs. So, look, it's, again, not going to be easy. We've just had three double-figure overs in this innings. The second went for 13. The fifth went for 10. That one went for 18, and you're not going to get too much. You're not going to get too much from these last two bowlers as well. I think you're going to get the openers coming back. Van der Voning's going to bowl the ninth. I think yeah. Iris Zvilling's going to bowl the tenth. But if Van der Voning went for 13, but to be honest, she had an outside edge for six and an inside edge for four in there. Yeah, look, she was definitely presenting troubles, but they've got to take the same approach that Vitanagi took against that in her previous overs. Yeah, so flash the bat at it. Try to use that pace. There's a deep third man and deep, oh, quite wide, fine leg, deep square leg, and then deep point. Here we go. 12 left in this game. It's a pretty good looking oh, cut shot, well and shot. that's going to run nice away for strike. four. Soon as I gets one a little bit short, a little bit wide, and the boundaries continue. That's five fours in a mm. row. As Regina joins the party and the Italians, they're up on their feet. Yeah, that's Amore, Vinny. Beautifully, beautifully struck. And certainly putting the pressure on the Netherlandish team at the moment. Again, probably a dangerous length to bowl at this stage. It's kind of a challenge length. And we know that Van der Voning gets a lot of balls to bounce over that cup, but Regina hit at top of the bounce. 21 off 11. Now, chops on it late. We'll get one. Over to Bartram. See, the left hand, right hand is important as yep. well, Joe. Yeah, they're using it well. Not letting the, the bowlers settle. Yeah, this is getting a bit tight now, isn't it? I mean, before that boundary uh, that started it all off, there hadn't been a boundary in 14 deliveries. And since then, it's gone four, four, four buys, four, four, one. Yeah, and there's that big gap behind point. They can beat the point field. Out. There are runs there with this angle. Funder Voning is going to create. Got to make sure she doesn't lose down the leg side here, Isabel. She does Shot. it well bowled, but crunched by Bartram. Landir does the fielding. She that deserved more, didn't it? Yeah, beautiful shot. But again, you can bowl to a field then if you've got that deep cover, if you get it outside the off stump. It's, it's a difficult one to beat that fielder with that kind of a stroke. 20 off 10, Vinny. What a game. These two have provided some really entertaining contests so far this week. And of owning. Trying to ice things. 
Nice looking shot. Drills it straight at the fielder though. Callis just knocks it down. Good shot. This is what I'm talking about. She's got that power on the drive, Regina. She does. A little bit earlier, I said she kind of bailed out against the spinner. I said, you know, just Keep some, going. some range hitting. I think where she feels more comfortable elevating and, and she'll be a real weapon even more than she already is. Bartram made the most of her slice of luck, hasn't she? She's 14 off seven. Things getting tight. Well bowled. Great bowling. It's wide. Fairly full, but not quite a wide. That is going to tempt the drive on every occasion in this situation. And just wide enough to be out of reach as well. Yeah, the back foot never kind of sneaks across at all. So it was hard for Bartram to reach for that. She is batting very far down the leg side. They feel like you need a boundary in one of these balls to come in the, the ninth over. All happens in the ninth, they say. Well, straight back in the bowler. They can't get a run. Oh, Anywhere else, I think they were going, yeah. except if it went back to the bowler. This will be the end of the over now. So it's 81 for three, off nine. And they're fine for time, so no penalty runs there. They'll need 18 off the last over. Well, how do you get 18? I feel like you need three boundaries, maybe four. <laughs> They'd have to replicate what they did, I think, in the eighth to Lynch. Anyway, yeah. Zilling's going to bowl. It should be Zwilling, and again, that pace, that's where they've been making the most runs. Well, I think really it will be Zwilling, but I'm not 100% sure. You'd, you'd have to assume so, right? Yeah, I think she's coming back now. But they've, they've really uh, fared much better against the pace bowlers than the slow bowlers. Yeah. Yeah. They've made decent scores both times now. Italy against the Netherlands, we saw the other night. We're in 69, which we thought time was a decent effort. They probably felt they were 10, 15 short of what they might have got. Right now, they're 81. Iris... Under pressure, 18 to win. And this will probably be one. Out. Yeah, I think Lynch shapes the throw. But Good gets choice. 30% more sensible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was saying, if you throw that, we're going to have an issue. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just the one. So now, Iris has to just mind that she doesn't lose the ball down the leg side with her natural movement, which will be into Amelia Bartram. What a good game this is. A few heart rates going up in the chat right now. Yeah. Great bowling. Great shot. But this might be four, and it is. Great well, shot. I think it's exactly where really wanted to put it, but Bartram holds her shape, and the coverage snuck in a li little bit there. Gets just enough to get it over the fielder, and that keeps this game alive. It's 13 off four required. God, what a good battle this is, Vinny. Bartram is driving beautifully. What a good shot, and I like the way she doesn't get lazy and try and hack across that. That's not no. her game. No. Again. Shot! But, <laughs> well, wow. Landier does really well to make this stop. It's absolutely pounded by Bartram. That's really, she looks very unfussed. Not breaking a sweat, even. I don't know if you can see where Landier is standing now behind the square. She yeah. has run 15 metres <laughs> somehow to stop that. Yeah. Brilliant she was a piece little of bit forward of square yeah, to for the left-hander. Yeah, left-hander she yeah. was. But anyway, 12 off three required now. It's a good shot, but only get one. Well, basically now you need a six and a four to tie. That's what you're looking at. It's 11 off two. Two sixes to win. Oh, jeez. You'd love to see it, wouldn't you? <laughs> Just one oh, six. One six right here. Such an entertaining I, game. I, I think Bartram's got it in her to clear the fence on the offside. She, she does, middles I think. One. Spilling. If I was her, I'd be just spearing in a Yorker. Yeah. Give her nothing to get under. Or a wide Yorker. Need wide a boundary. Yorker. Like that. Yeah. That's. Oh, he wants to give it. He's going to give it. Well. <laughs> I really like Iris' attitude. Yeah. Like, ah. yeah. I but mean, this one grabs a fair bit of the line. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think for the game point of view, I'm happy it was called. Yeah. Uh, that facial expression. Looked very familiar. Be a good poker player. <laughs> All right, here we very go. Ten off two. Still goal. need a boundary here, Italy. Oh, and they'll get one. They'll get wow. one. Well, that makes it six to win off the last ball. We've got a last ball thriller here. What a shot by Bartram. Well, she needs to find a little bit extra power here. Zwilling still is just looking cool as a cucumber. This is a proper cricket shot. Bartram goes straight down the ground. The mid-off was up in the circle. So they need a six to win, a Maximo to win. 
And I think we just had one in this innings. It was Ratnaika hit one earlier. And look, pressure on Babette Delayda behind the stumps here. Does not want to let anything pass her. And the, yeah, you can't bowl. Don't bowl an extra either. Because no. then if you bowl a wide, a four will be enough to tie it. Pressure at the rock. Italy, one ball away from a famous victory. They need a Maximo. And she She's hits it. And it's She's down the big. ground. Whoa. She's done it. Oh She's done goodness. it. Italy, oh, can what you a win. It? And Bartram, wow. the hero. And that went miles over the boundary. That one went halfway to the rock, Joe. And Italy have beaten the Dutch here in match nine. Unbelievable scenes and a memorable victory for the Azzurri. What is that? As you see the Italian supporters staff and the family and the friends all hugging each other, jumping around. What an amazing moment for this team coming up against the favourites in this tournament. And on the last ball, Bartram manages to clear the rope. The biggest six we've seen yet. What a shot. Unbelievable. What a shot. Unbelievable. That was unbelievable batting. Wow. It was absolutely crunched. I said she had to get it absolutely perfect. And it was. It was absolutely perfect. And that was six on any ground in world cricket. Bartram goes large. Unbelievable. I've got to say, I'd lost hope. I'd lost hope, I've, really. I've not seen you this speechless ever. Oh, well, it takes a lot to get <laughs> my voice to crack. Have a look at this. I mean, she doesn't panic. She stays completely still oh, and just gets out of the every middle. piece of that. And that ball disappears into the night. Bartram, the hero. That was Kenroy Nesta regions of six hitting at the Rock. She finishes 29 off 13. Unbelievable work. And I don't think she can believe it either. <laughs> well, it's good reward. Oh, they want to say, don't off. lift me don't up. Lift me. They're oh, going to do it. <laughs> and Amelia Bartram, oh, take a wow. bow. Oh, had a bit of a slice of luck, we thought, maybe early in the innings. But from then, she did not put a foot wrong. And Italy, that's going to be a famous victory. Yeah, and look, I, I go back to Italy beating England in the ECC way back in 2021. And this will be every bit as sweet for Italian cricket as they knock over the highly fancy Dutch and the yeah, Netherlands. They'll be scratching their head thinking, where did it go wrong? Because... Well, just tomorrow night's going to be interesting because Netherlands got the double header. Join us, 4.30 GMT, 5.30 Central Europe, 10 p.m. In, in Indian time. But look, let's roll the highlights because I want to see this again because, you know, the Italy, they needed a good start and there were some nice shots played with Nagi was sent up to open to try and get them moving in the power play. Ratnaika, well, she made the most of a bit of luck here. This one was sliced away for six and then she got a lucky French cut for four. Delang, I think, bowled pretty well as well. But yeah, through the middle overs, Italy just seemed to fall too far behind. And I couldn't see how they were going to get back in it. No, it did. looked like they were well and truly on the back foot, especially when that good catch was taken there by Sarah Callas. She's fielding at short extra cover and uh, clamped down a little bit. But it, the tone was really set by the opening batters, Ratnake and Vitanage, who uh, gave a bit of confidence to the lower order. The middle order come in, sort of Zaya and uh, Emilia Bartram at the end, able to really keep going with that aggressive intent. intent. Yeah, and so... You know, one thing I liked about Italy is they had a real positive attitude all the way through. And look, there's a lot of emotions right now out there just seeing the girls coming off. They're absolutely overjoyed. And there's tears, there's all kinds of things going on at the moment. Yeah, but Bartram came on. I mean, she, she looks like she might have uh, been a bit lucky to get away with an LBW, but she made the most of it. And this one was unbelievable. Six to win. She hit it halfway to the rock. And that is the rock around the clock that we'll remember for a long time here as the Azuri, they've done it. And it's an unbelievable work as they get there off the very last ball. The final score is Italy 99, the Netherlands 98. As we have a look at the scorecard, unbelievable work from the Italians and with the Dutch. I mean, obviously they're missing a couple of key players, but it just shows you this format throws up some humdingers of contest and this was no exception Joe. Yeah that was a rip snort of any absolutely and doesn't it bode well for the competition them taking that victory from the Dutch really setting it up for that top of the table positioning towards the end as we get towards the finals day. Yeah well Ratnaka was top scorer with 30 but Bartram for me player of the match and there's no way around that 29 off 13 and she hit five fours in a six scoring at 223 strike rate as Regina helped them get over the line with 17 not out as well as far as the bowling went, you could see that uh, Zwilling just looked cool, but unfortunately, she went run for 25 in the end, conceding 18 off the last over. Delanga bowled well, one for 11, best of the bowlers for me. Lynch and Landier also getting wickets. Yeah, there's tears, there's cheers, there is glory and joy. Have a look at this Italian bench as we can uh, 
see some of the emotion going on there, hopefully captured by our wonderful Spring Productions team. They are all about yeah. tears running down the faces, and this is a huge moment for Italian cricket, Not let alone Italian women's cricket, Italian cricket, Vinny. This is a big moment. Yeah, well, I mean, I was showing that for a second because we had... Uh, yeah, we had, we had tears there. I mean, there's there's a lot of emotions. I mean, it seemed like they had no no chance to get back in that game. But this is what we've come to expect. I mean, and look, if you had any doubts about this women's international T10, uh, about uh, how it will go, I think just watch that game. That was one of the best finishes you could ever imagine of a cricket match. Yeah, absolutely. Could not have hoped for more, folks. And it just sets it up. Perfect, enticing, exciting cricket here at The Rock. What can you say? I'm a bit speechless. I can't uh, believe we just I, saw that. I mean, the thing with Bartram is she'd batted really well. But even when she looked like she'd nailed it, hadn't quite gone for six the whole time. Yeah. It always kind of... She picked out the sweeper a few times uh, on the bounce. She had to get it just right. She absolutely that went middle though. Miles, we had a great view of that. Anyway, I want to say a big thank you to all of you guys wherever you're watching from around the world. It's been great to have your company once again. Tomorrow night here in Gibraltar, it is the last night of group matches. Then we'll have finals on Saturday. And really with that result, it seems to me it's going to be hard to, to get the Italian out of the top two. It's going to yeah. be hard to get the Dutch out of the top two. So that could be a preview for a final and what a final that might be. But still, it's going to be great. Hopefully, we can have your company for three matches tomorrow night. Elimination Day in Malta as well. Go to our social media at European Cricket to find out some of the best bits. And I think you'll find that on there. Uh, and also, don't forget, if you're watching on YouTube, to uh, hit the like button on this video. Also, subscribe to the channel and tell your family, tell your friends about ECN. What a finish. Yeah, what do we do now? Go and watch the replay. I think that uh, the Italy team will be watching the replay. I'm going to have a word with Amelia Bartram after that as well. You we might have her in the commentary box tomorrow night. Sounds good. How about that? Thanks again so much for your company. We'll leave you with some highlights of the day to the beautiful tones of the European cricket song. But from us here, Vinny Sander here, Mr. Maximo, and Joe Wigasani. I hope you have a happy and a safe evening. We'll see you tomorrow for more action. It doesn't get much better than that. See you for more. Ciao. ECIW Gibraltar. Good night, everyone. Hear me, cricketers, time to cheer and show the world what you love. Master blasts turn on the spire, cricket's a beautiful game. Smiling faces and celebrations as the champions enjoy their fame. European legends breaking records, making their own dreams come true. Watched by millions of European cricketers show the world what they can do. Now picture this. Ten runs needed to win off the last over of the match. Fielders are on fire, sliding and diving, want to take that world-class catch. Tension building as the ball runs in, will it be short, or your curve or slow? A six will win it, four to tie into the golden ball we go. Cricketers, hear me cricketers, share your passion for riding the flag. Clubhouse and all